All right, you may be seated. Good morning, jurors. All right, you're still under oath. Okay. Are we on the record? Yes. Uh, okay, we'll go ahead and uh, resume the video at one hour and five minutes. I love horses, but I don't like, like horses because of Western. Western. Westerns have made me not like horses. Horses and guns just suck. Mm. Um, Ken, are you a certified firearms instructor? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Have you ever taken like any courses or anything to become an instructor? No. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure if that's required for this. Yeah, yeah and it might not be, but more just, you know, Back. And I'm <clears throat> I'm sorry, Corporal. I I myself couldn't hear what kind of an instructor you were asking her about. Can Can you summarize that? Yeah. So I asked her if she was um, a certified <coughs> firearms instructor. Okay. Thank you. Grounded. Yeah. Your totally. interest in yeah this kind of stuff. Yeah, no, mostly just trained with my dad. My dad, like, probably wouldn't send me to go train with someone else exactly, you know. Makes sense. Yeah, he is kind of the industry. Um, so as far as the accidental discharges on set, can when I just, did can, I, can I just ask you? Okay, stuff? so I think when... Are, are we good on hearing? Okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. October 17th. Okay. Those, that actually, it, they both occurred within 10 minutes of each other. So they were on the same day? They were on the same day, and it was chaotic okay. for that little bit. Um, but anyway, so I go to the bathroom. It's the first time I've been able to step off of set. Um, I think it's like 4, four 2, maybe 3 o'clock. Um, finally get to step off set. I'm on the toilet, and all of a sudden I hear some screaming in my earpiece. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And then I hear Dave say, it's okay, everyone, it's just a misfire. And I, I like, go, what the fuck? So I run out of the bathroom with my pants halfway down. Um, I'm running to set, trying to figure out what happened, and I walk up to set, and Sarah's, like, loading the guns. And I'm like, hey, like, how's it going? And she's all like, oh, good. Um, I was like, what happened? She's like, nothing, really. Can you load the one in there? And I say, okay, I'll go in there, and I'll load that one, because I had been loading that Henry with that with that stuntman for quite some time now, probably like most of the day. Um, so I go in there and I load it with him. I load that one with him and I tell him, all right, so I say, I said, all right, you got about 13 quarter or half loads in there. I can't really remember what it was for that particular scene. That might have been, the actors were outside, so those were probably quarters. So I tell him you have about 13 quarter loads in there. And he said, is there one in the chamber? And I said, yes. And he said, okay. And I said, okay. So don't touch the trigger. And he was like, okay. And I walk out. And then I go up to Sarah and I said, hey, uh, what happened? And she was like, I was like, I heard there was like a misfire, which is like the wrong terminology for it even. That's an accidental discharge. Um, so I was like, I heard there was like a misfire or something. And she was like, uh, yeah, I was loading it. And she's like, and it just went off. And I said, because I had to train her how to do, how to put them in and make sure that the hammer goes down gently enough. Because I asked her if she knew how to do that from Seth, and she's like, yeah, but let me just do it again a couple of times in front of you. And I saw her do it, and I was like, no, no. I was like, put your thumb all the way over the trigger. I mean, not the trigger, the hammer. Otherwise, you know, if you don't put it all the way over, your hands will be sweaty sometimes, and it will flip. And so she was loading it, and I'm not exactly sure what happened. Like I said, I was in the bathroom, but guns don't just go off like that. Um, and if you're loading it, it's most likely that you made a mistake just loading it and that the hammer came down too quick. Okay. And, you know, when you're in a rush, that can happen. It hasn't happened to me, but I can understand it happening. Um, and then as soon as that had happened and I walked outside and I was asking her about that, Next thing I know, boom, inside of the fucking thing. And I already told him this gun was hot. 
I know for a fact I did, and we were doing that scene all day. So this man knows this gun is hot. And then I go in there, and I said, what the fuck are you doing in here? And he tells me, he's like, I don't know, it just went off. And I was like, well, it's a lever-action rifle, and that's not really how that works, bud. You know. So pissed him off a little bit, but I said, all right, be careful in here. Thankfully, we were doing that scene pretty much all day, so I think a lot of camera had their earplugs in, but... It was inside when it went off, though? It was inside of this, yeah, little shack that they were in, and most of the camera crew was in there at the time. Okay. Yeah, so that one was inside, and then there was also a popper misfire with special effects. Okay. Yeah, and that was, uh, that was the day... That was the day that we first started shooting and everything. We didn't. We had pretty good luck with that. Every time, you know, we got done with the scene, I count all the shots, so I know if there's still a hot gun on set. So I was looking for that, and most of the time, I would just run to the actor and be like, "Don't touch it. It's hot still." Okay. Yeah. Um, as far as when Sarah's gun went off, is that possible if you? like drop the hammer too quickly that it can discharge? Yeah, totally. And it was pulling the trigger? Uh, yeah, no. That happens. That happens. Okay. If you, well, see, that's the thing. No, so you have to pull the trigger in order to bring that hammer all the way down, you know? So you have your finger on the hammer, and in order to get the hammer to release back to a position where the person could grab it and do the scene, you have to put your you have to touch the trigger and slowly lower the hammer down. If you touch the trigger, it'll just send the hammer down. So if your finger isn't there to stop it while you're loading it, it's going to come down and shoot it. So these, I mean, now I understand why that can. Ha- I mean, that I mean can everybody has said so that it happens often. Of this kind of stuff. So I that that, that was, totally can happen often, and it's just because ultimately you do have to lower down that hammer again in order to start the scene. You can't like give it to the actor like cocked back and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and it's it's the same with a lot of um, like even my 22. I have to do that as well, you know. Like I'll bring it back. There's like a little piece that stays back, and unless I hold that and slowly release it while holding my trigger, that would go off too. Interesting. And so even my Walter P. Even well, and that's just my Walter P. Twenty two. That's not a revolver. Like that's just a regular like magazine. In order to load these, does the hammer have to be back? It has to be half cocked. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, and then you have to bring it back all the way, or like kind of you can you can bring it back from a half cock, kind of, but it helps to bring it back all the way and just bring it down slowly. Okay. Um, after both of those uh, accidental discharges, what happened? So, this day is kind of when Sarah and I butt heads. Um, because ultimately, like, after hers, I was livid. And then after that one, I was, like, furious. Um, and so I tell her, I was like, no, dude. I was like, what just happened? And, like, I'm getting heckled by the fucking stuntman at this point. Um, I said, no, dude, that, like, wasn't okay. We need to talk to production about this because a lot of people are probably pissed about that Mm -hmm. because it happened within 10 minutes of each other, two of them. And I was like, oh, my God. I literally screamed out, what the fuck is happening? Um, But so I told Sarah, I was like, hey, we we should probably talk to production about that. And, like, Sarah is embarrassed at this point. She's shaking. Her face is, like, pretty mad. Mm -hmm. Um... And she's not really responding to me too much. She's, I said, I said, well, like, you know, you did that while loading it. And I was like, so I'm not sure if people are going to want you loading the guns anymore. And she was like, well, yours just went off in there after you loaded it. And I said, yeah, well, I can't be responsible for every dickhead fucking stunt guy that gets a hold of the gun and doesn't understand the concept that it's hot. Right. You know. And she was like, all right, well, so we'll go ahead. So she, I was like, we need to talk for, to pre-reduction. I'll let you talk to them. I'm not trying to get us in trouble here. I'm just saying, like, we need to mind this because a lot of people are probably pissed. And the next thing I know, I get a text from Seth. Um, So she was there. She was, like, mad, angry texting. And I thought she was probably talking to the producers. And the next thing I know, I get a text from Seth. And Seth tells me, uh, Sarah told me about her accidental miss, like, her accidental discharge. It was an accident. Accidents happen. You need to get over it. And I said, 
get over it. I was like, what are you talking about? I said, I'm not making a big deal about this. I was like, I'm not going to production to rat on her. I don't know what the fuck you're going on about. So there was nobody from production in the area? I think there was people from production in the area. I think there were, like, two... Uh, the regular chump, chubby producer, he was there, and I think Nathan might have even been there. And nobody they were there a lot. Um, no one said anything. Sarah apologized on the spot, I guess. Um, I didn't really apologize uh, for that because I'm just trying to figure it out at this point, and I don't know what that guy did. Who uh, was um, I don't even know his name. I think his name was Blake. Yeah, he, they also didn't have me train him at all with the gun, and he's Alex's stunt double, mind you. So, you know, Alex. he's Alex's stunt double. So he probably should have at least been trained, but also uh, Alan, the stunt coordinator, was like, all my guys know what the fuck they're doing, so don't worry about them. So, yeah, um, didn't get to work with that guy. And me and... Back to, like, the set thing, um, I went up to Sarah about it, and I was like, hey, I texted her, and I was like, I'm sorry if you thought I was trying to start problems about this. I was just trying to say that we should tell production because I don't want, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we both got fired for that. I wouldn't, like, you know, we need to make sure that everyone still feels comfortable after that. And she said, um, right, she said, no, I understand. Um, I contacted Gabby and Roe about it. And I told, went ahead and told Seth, and I apologized to everyone on the spot, and I think they're going to just move past this and move by it. And I was like, okay, cool, as long as you contacted the producers. Okay. But Other you than didn't that, ever see her actually contact them? No, no, I didn't. Uh, and also, uh, at that point, I had already pissed her off, and she went to Seth about it, so I wasn't going to fuck with that anymore, and I just let her handle it. Okay. Because you ultimately, really she did yourself. No, because she was my boss and already was a, yeah. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, do you know of any reports being made about those? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, I uh, have been wondering recently if she did talk to them, and no one from production talked to us about it, which I thought was pretty weird. You know, like, no one even said, like, all right, guys, like, you know, pick your, get your shit together. Like, no one said anything to us, at least to me directly. Was, um, so when Sarah went off, what happened? Did you take the gun after that, or what happened with it after? Uh, after that, you know, we just had to keep loading it for the stunt guys, and ultimately, uh, after hers went off, I didn't exactly have the option. We had three people that needed to be loaded right then. Okay. So I didn't exactly have the option to take Sarah off of guns that day. And also, she is my boss, so I'm not allowed to take her off of guns. Yeah, she does continue to load. Okay. Even after that? Yeah. After her discharging. Um, Who unloaded them that day? Unloaded them from the blanks? Yeah. Both of us. Okay. Yeah, and we unload them as we get them in from the actor as soon as they're done doing the scene. You and Sarah, then? Yeah. Pretty much any big gun battle in this entire thing, we were both loading and unloading the guns. Okay. What about the, the special effects that squib or whatever that went off? It was like a popper. Um, I'm not sure if they had a squib go off. I never saw that. Um, it's like a popper. It's like a thing that hangs from the ceiling, and it's filled with, like, little debris and things like that. But they were all supposed to go off for a scene, and one didn't go off. And then, like, maybe two minutes after the scene, it just, like, randomly went off, and people were like, oh, shit. But we were outside, so it wasn't too bad, you know? Were you present? In, so you weren't present when it went off? The popper? Yeah. I was present. Okay. I was outside, and I was a little, uh, like, maybe 20 feet away from it. Okay. I wasn't directly on the porch, so a lot of people on the porch were obviously freaked out, but I was pretty far away. Okay. Do you know if any reports were made for that one? Uh, for that popper? Oh, I have no idea. I know, especially if it's not my department. I wouldn't really know about it. I didn't make any reports. Um, and I just want you to confirm, were guns ever taken out 
after hours, on lunch, on days off. These are these guns absolutely were locked up every single moment. That means they were not there to my knowledge. Okay. Um, going and then including lunch every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then going back to that um, accidental discharge of Sarah, I know you said that you weren't there, you were in the bathroom. Yes. Um, I was there for the second one. Okay. With is the it, stunt man. And is it okay for you to walk off when they have... Uh, it's like okay. Continues. Sometimes, you know, like I said, I was, we were doing a lot of gun battles that whole entire day, and ultimately there was only two people shooting at the time, and I told Sarah, I was like, I need to use the bathroom right now or I'm literally going to piss my pants. And I told Dave that I was going to the bathroom too. So if I tell them I step off, I step off, and they know that. Okay. Because ultimately, you know, you can't hold it sometimes. Right. Yeah. Um, and it really sucked that day, too, because the bathrooms were, like, far as shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to go um, to the incident, okay? Okay. So the box of ammo that you pulled from that day. Yeah. Um, box of dummies. Right. Where did you pull that box from? Um, so that box, it was kind of peculiar, actually. Um, now that I've thought about it a little more, because we had been looking for the 45 long Colt dummies, and we hadn't had a lot of them because, like I said, we used up all of, a lot of mine at the beginning, if not all of them. And so we had to order some 4440s, which are kind of a, a similar size. And then we did get some 45 long Colts a little before that, um, probably before that weekend. And we put all of, pretty much all of that entire box in Travis Fimmel's, uh Gun belt. Okay. Yeah. And then, so this box, I hadn't been aware of any more long cult boxes and everything, and this box was kind of just sitting uh, right next to my safe on, like, this kind of extra bag that I bring to carry guns in. Okay. Yeah, and so I thought it was kind of weird. Looking back at it now, it was kind of just, like, sitting on top of my stuff, and considering the prop truck got moved, over the weekend, I don't know like how easily that would have stayed up there. And this box was there in the morning. Can you elaborate on that when you get there? Because I think it's a significant issue. Right. Yeah. So this uh, wasn't one of the original boxes that were provided, though. No, and it was weird. I think it just said dummies on it. Like okay. nothing else. I saw just the word dummies on it, from what I could remember. Which is not the regular font I'm used to seeing on it either. And it's propped up in your bag. And, and, yeah. And, and, and. It's propped up in my bag, uh, you know, just like sitting on top of stuff, like not falling over in the bag, you know, because it was on top of something. So, like, it seems weird that it wouldn't have fallen over while moving. Do you remember which bag it was? Uh, it was, oof. it was like, a, it was either above a Smith & Wesson bag. I don't know if you guys saw that. It's like it says Smith & Wesson, and I marked it out with Sharpie, so that way people wouldn't rob my car. Um, oh, and then there's another black bag that I had, too. They were both, like, kind of, there were two black bags kind of usually stacked on top of each other. Okay, so that the box that you pulled out of that day, though, was on that bag? Yeah. Okay. And it was just kind of sitting up there, and I remember I was, like, looking for, you know, blanks to pull, dummies to pull, and I saw that box, and I was, like, I was, like, exclaimed, and I was, like, I was like, where the fuck did this, like, box of dummies come from? I was like, have we had this the entire time? I was like, we've been needing these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nicole just laughed, and I don't really remember if Sarah was there or not. But I said, like, oh, well, whatever, at least we have them now. Put them on the cart, and they went out with us. Okay. And I, as I picked them up, they were jingling. So that indicates that they were dummies. Okay. Had you seen the box prior to that point? I hadn't really noticed that box prior to that point, but I think I had noticed a box that looked similar to it that we had gotten those newer ones from. And I think I remembered like a box similar to that. And it might have it might have been the same box even. Okay. This was maybe because we didn't put those dummies back in there though, but that's the only other box that looked like that box. Okay. Was one of those newer boxes that we got. And I think it just had like just dummies on it. Corporal, they 
based on your understanding of dummy rounds and how an armorer would check dummy rounds, um, based on your investigation, is it possible to determine that every round in a box is a dummy round if you just shake the entire box? No. Because if you just shake the box, how you, can you tell? I mean, yeah, you could more than likely hear some of them jingling, but it wouldn't be, um, you know, feasible to point out that every single one of those had BBs in it. So, based on your interaction with Ms. Gutierrez during this part of the interview, I just want to be clear. Was it your impression that, that, that she claimed that this was a box she'd never seen before? Yeah, that's what she stated. Um, so it was a box she'd never seen before and she just decided to grab it and start loading guns with it? Yes. After shaking the entire box? Yes. Not each round, the box itself? Correct, just the box. All right. No lettering, anything of the sort? No, no leather, lettering or anything like that. I think I just saw the word dummies. It didn't say caliber on it? Uh, I don't believe it did. It might have said long quote on the other side. I don't really remember. Okay. LC, maybe. All right. I don't know. So, um, at the beginning of the day, before lunch, how many guns were pulled out? Okay. <laughs> Can I have, like, a piece of paper or something? Just because, like, there's a lot of people in this, you know. Yeah, I have <laughs> probably a few. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like you're running out of paper. <laughs> All right. So, you know, there's... There's Alec Baldwin's character. This is Russ. Um, Jensen's character, Wood. Uh, Drum. And we have a Miller over here. And so these are the ones that were being used today. And also, I think Boone was coming in later that day, but I don't think we pulled his gun. So check this out. Miller has two pistols and a long rifle. Rifle. There we go. Russ has a pistol, a long barrel one, different than everyone else's really. Long barrel. And he also has a Henry rifle. Rifle. So at this point, that's, you know, that's like three guns, four, five. And then Wood has a gun. And he also has a long gun. So that's another pistol and another rifle. Oh, wait, he has a shotgun, my bad. And the drum also has a shotgun and a pistol. Okay. And those were all prior to lunch? These are all prior to lunch, yes. So I think that's a total of one, two, three, five pistols and four long guns, two shotguns. Okay. And if you would like, that's yours. Um, you might need that. Okay. <laughs> well, we can illustrate a little more, so keep it. Cool. Um, were they loaded prior to lunch? Yeah. So what you have to understand about before lunch is that we were at another location for most, for half of the day before lunch, and then we had gotten done with that location and we moved up to the church. Okay. Right. So. During the day, um, at the beginning of the day, none of those were dummied up at all because the shot was so wide. You okay. just, like, wouldn't see it. So there was nothing in these? There was nothing in these until we got to the church. Okay. Which yeah. was, but still prior to breaking to lunch. Yeah, still prior to breaking to lunch. So, so if you had to break up the day like that, you could split, like, before lunch into two things. One where we were somewhere else entirely and nothing was dummied up, and after that... Uh, we were in the church and things started to get dummied up and but weren't dummied up right away. Okay. Um, so then which ones of these were loaded prior to lunch? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wood dummies prior to lunch, wood and drums pistols were dummied up. Sarah helped me dummy those up. Okay. And uh, a little later on, the camera started getting in on Russ, and so Russ got his dummied up uh, maybe an hour and a half before lunch. Okay. Yeah. Anything with Miller? 
Miller was not in there. Okay. Yeah, so Miller's character was coming later in the day. Um, yeah, so he wasn't in the church at all. So, honestly, I'm pretty sure that we put away his two pistols and his long rifle for a good proportion before lunch because we always try to put them away as we're not using them and lock them up. Okay. So only one dummy up though are the pistols? Yes, yeah, three pistols. And they should have both been used at the time of the incident. Like they were both, all three of those were out there. Okay. So who loaded what gun? Uh, Sarah and I loaded woods and drums. I don't really remember who they are. Identical guns. So you wouldn't really know. Um, okay. And then Rust, uh, I'm, I've dummied that one up. Okay. Yeah. And all the dummy rounds? All the dummy rounds, yeah. And we were shaking them and checking them as we did it, yeah. Okay. And then some of them didn't have to be shaked, but yeah. And why didn't they have to be? They didn't have primer caps on them. And sometimes I accidentally still, like, shake the ones with holes in them, just thinking that they're going to shake, and then I, like, realize... Yeah, that's the only time where I've ever, like, thought there was a bad one is, like, when I shake it and I don't hear anything and then I realize, I'm like, oh, it's the ones that don't shake. Can you recall when you loaded, whichever ones you loaded, um, what specific rounds you put in them? Yes. Okay. So, for the rust pistol, um, the wooden drum, I don't exactly remember those, you know. Uh, I think most of those, not exactly sure what was up with those. Um, but for the rust one, I remember I had four of them without primer caps okay. because I always try to use those ones ultimately. Uh, I have four of them without primer caps, and then I grabbed some dummies from that box, and I, like, brought them in there, and I was walking in with the – I'm walking in with his belt right here, and I'm walking in holding – the four, uh, the four no primer cap ones, and some extra ones too. And I'm, there were two that like could have been shaken, so I'm shaking them both as I walk in. And I walk in, and I put the four no prime, the four no primers in there. And then I like look at my hand, and I notice there's one with a hole in the side, so I use that one next. And then I try to put one of the ones that shook in there, but it won't go in. And so at that point. I show Dave, um, I leave that one out because I notice like that needs to be cleaned. So I leave it out, I move I move the cylinder to a location. Uh, Corporal, uh, what was the when you were in the room interviewing Ms. Gutierrez, did she um did she physically demonstrate that she was shaking two dummies at one time? Yes. Thank you. Where you wouldn't notice that that one isn't in there. Yeah. So I move it to where you wouldn't be able to see that, and then I go ahead, I show Dave. Uh, he watched me do it, too, that time. This is before lunch, and uh, I walk out after handing it and showing it to Alec, too. Okay. So before breaking for lunch, there's only five rounds in that gun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I proceeded from that one that wouldn't go in. I just set it on the cart after that. Okay. The four that you got without the primer, Yeah. where were those pulled from? Uh, those were pulled from my pocket. From your pocket? Yeah. Okay. So the other two were pulled from that box. Corporal, um... When you interviewed Ms. Gutierrez on October 21st, she had some dummy rounds in her pocket, correct? Yes, she did. Um, do you remember how many she had? Uh, she had five, I believe. And do you recall how many of those didn't have primer caps? Uh, I believe four of them had the holes, but I don't remember how many didn't have primer caps. Okay. Um, I may ask you on a break to, to go back and review that, or I'll try to find it for you. Um, is, it, is it your understanding on October 21st when you interviewed her that the dummy rounds that she pulled out of her pocket uh, were rounds that she had taken out of the gun? No. All right. Uh, so in addition to what she is describing to you now, apparently she had five additional dummy rounds in her pocket. Yes, she did. All right. Yeah. 
you remember about what time you loaded these guns? Um, not exactly. I would maybe guess mm -hmm. like ten thirty for rust, maybe ten. And then for the other two, they were loaded like maybe thirty minutes before that. Okay. Yeah. So fairly early. Yeah, pretty early in the day. Start super early. <laughs> when you broke for lunch, um, none of the rounds were taken out of any of these guns. Uh, no, none of those were taken out. We just put them in the socks and we brought them to the truck, and from there we put them into the safe. Okay. Yeah. Into the safe. With the dummies, yeah. yeah. Still yeah, dummies. I mean, yeah. yeah. Just so we're clear, yeah, just with the dummies. Okay. And the other two guns were full. Yeah, the other two guns still were dummied up, yeah. Okay. Um, so who physically put these back in the safe? Uh, you know, I think I'm pretty sure Sarah was doing it at the time, and I was kind of just down on the ground, like, handing them up to the prop truck because I had a really bad headache. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't climb, try to climb up there or anything because my head was, like, pounding. And did you guys um, take them to the truck with the cart, or did you just carry them? We just carried them. Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that uh, she was, uh, on October 21st, her head was pounding? Yes. Did she indicate she had a headache? Yes, she did. And just to be clear, the interview that we're watching right now, this interview was done less than three weeks after Ms. Hutchins died. Yeah, this one was on November 9th. Thank you. We left the cart there at lunch. And was all the ammo in that cart? Still? Yeah. And was there some in the truck still? Yeah, there's, there's always going to still be, like, blanks in the truck because we want to never need to bring all of them out, okay. you know. How many boxes do you think are left on that cart? Uh, on the cart, I would guess, like, maybe hmm, I had some shotguns. I had some, I would guess maybe 10, 10 boxes. All on the bottom? or On the bottom. On the bottom, and then there was, you know, the dummies on the top that we were taking from. Okay, so just one box on the top. I think just one box on the top. Um, I might have been preparing some things beforehand and dumped uh, some quarter loads into my fanny pack or whatever and left a box up there that was empty. Okay. All right, so after lunch, who took the guns out of the safe? Uh, after lunch, uh, not really sure. I don't really remember that too much. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it would have been one of the, you or Sarah, right? Yeah, me or Sarah. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I kind of had a headache, and I was, like, getting over it, so. And they were all still in the socks? They were all still in the socks, yes. How do you know which one's pull? if they're all? We leave the handles out. Of the guns? Yeah. Okay. And then also, I set them... So normally, like, there's a bulk of them up on the very top. I'll kind of set them on, like, the sides where the rifles, like, heads go if I need to access them quickly. And then there's, if you saw the gun safe, there's also, like, holsters on the side. So we would usually put Jensen and Swin, Wood and Drum guns over there because they're the two sheriffs and they go together. Okay. And then we would just put Russ gun, like, kind of below all the other guns, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, so when you pulled them back out, did you guys check the rounds in them? Uh, we didn't. We brought them two set, as okay. as they were in the socks still. Okay. Were they ever reopened? The guns? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not too sure. Um, I reopened the I reopened the rust gun. I'm not sure about the wood and the drum. Okay. Uh, Sarah was mostly working on propping those guys up. Uh, the rust gun I opened up after lunch because I remembered that it was dirty and I remembered that I was like, all right, we're about to start shooting out of it. So I go and I put the little cleaning guy that I have, I open it up, put the cleaning guy through, take one out of the box, shake it. Um, and at this point, after I had put the cleaning guy through, Dave's in my ear and he's like, hey, we need the gun in here. And I'm like, okay. So I start to bring the gun in there, shake it, put it in, 
as I'm walking in, and then I bring it to Dave. I show Dave, like, all of the cylinder, and then I tell him it's dummied up, um, and I say, all right. Um, oh, yeah, and he's like, it's okay. Uh, it's just he's, like, getting talked to at this point, by the way, too, by Helena and Joel, and he's sitting there, and he's like, can you just hand me the gun because I'm going to sit in with it, and I said, Okay, and I showed him it, and then I walked out after showing it to him and handing it to him. So he was just supposed to be sitting in with it. Okay. So you clean it, but then grab another round from that box. Yeah. You didn't pull one because you said that you had put it on the cart. Yeah, I didn't pull that same one. Okay. Um, any issues when you put that round in that time? No. Okay. And then I think it's because it was clean. So would you say it's your responsibility to check? The guns after they come back out? They come back out? Like when they brought back out for lunch? Um, yeah. We um it's my responsibility to check them into the actor as they go out to the actor. So not to check the rooms again? Um, I wouldn't really check it unless it was going to set. But it did go to set. Yeah, it it went to set and I checked it with Dave. Okay. Um did you do any other you know, I know that you have different processes for checking these guns. Did you do any other check on that gun? Um, I did I did um some barrel obstruction check too also because you know, while that while that round was in there you're able to pull the hammer back slightly, look down the barrel and see if there's anything in the barrel for that. So I did a barrel check on that gun. And did you see anything at that point? No. Okay. Um, that round that you pulled out of the box. Corporal, do you understand the description that Ms. Gutierrez gave of how she was able to do a barrel check? Uh, that she pulled the hammer back a little bit to check it? Um, did she indicate, uh, and I'm sorry, did, if you recall, did she indicate whether or not there was a dummy uh, or, or whether it was the cylinder was loaded with dummies? Uh, she didn't indicate at that point. Okay. Um, if, if a revolver uh, cylinder is loaded with anything, can you see down the barrel? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Okay. The last one that you loaded, Yeah. what did that look like? Uh, it looks like the dummies that don't have the hole in the side or anything. Okay. Um, did you notice anything different about any of the rounds that went in? No. Because you said that you spun it with Dave, right? Yeah, I spun it with Dave. Okay. And you didn't notice anything different? Uh, no, I didn't notice anything different. And four out of the... I was also of... getting talked at with Dave and everything, and I'm just mostly trying to show it to Dave. Right. Yeah. I mean, While also looking at it, yeah. Makes sense. Um, but the four of them still have the depressed primers? Yeah. Okay. And then the two didn't? Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you think someone would potentially put a light on it? Corporal, what's your understanding of... After the incident, where the gun was unloaded? Um, so in Hannah's interview, um, she said that Dave Halls had brought that revolver over to her and she had um, checked and unloaded that weapon over the prop cart. Um, and, and have you uh, have you seen photos uh, of those rounds that were taken from the prop cart? Yes. Do you know, are there four dummy rounds with depressed primers? I believe there was. Thanks. Mm, I mean, the same way you would put the dummies or the blanks in there, opening it up and putting it in there. Okay. Um, and you're talking about the dummy boxes? What? Yeah. The box from that one. What do you mean? So I'm saying like you would, if you wanted to load this with a live potentially, you would just pull it back half cock and put it in there. I don't know if you but understood your question. I, I don't think I am. <laughs> yeah, so, but you said that you loaded each and every one of those rounds. Yeah. How would you say that a live round got 
in this box that you pulled from? Um, I'm not entirely sure if someone put li a live round into that box or not. Uh, I checked those to the best of my abilities. I was walking in, shaking it in my ear, mm -hmm. and I thought I heard it shake for sure. When do you think somebody would have had the opportunity to put a live round? Um, you know, it's hard to speculate on that exactly, but, you know, that gun, it was on Alex most of the day, uh, and then also it was on top of our cart sometimes, too, and there were times when I was gone to the bathroom, you know, and like I said, I got a key, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell the girls to watch the card and everything, but sometimes the girls get distracted by the actors. And you need to elaborate in the box because you're missing that part of the question. Okay. How that could have gotten in that box. Oh, um, so, I mean, honestly, that box was sitting out all day. And when I picked up that box, I heard it jingle, like the whole box jingle. So that, to me, was saying, like, you know, this is a box of dummies, you know, still check everyone for the jingle. But, so definitely some of those were 100% dummies, you know, and I don't know, someone probably, could, possibly could have done something at lunch. The box could have already had some live one in it in the morning, and you probably wouldn't have noticed um, unless you picked it up. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure when that could have got in there, and honestly, it could have been in there from the beginning of it. Okay. Where was the prop cart? The prop cart, so that's another thing. The prop cart, like, moved um, significantly after the incident. Um, well, I mean, I'm not everything else. Well, the statement that Ms. Gutierrez just made, that the prop cart had moved significantly after the incident, is that consistent with what she told you on October 21st? No. I moved after the incident. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not really... All right. Cool. Well, you know, I'm a concern, but during lunch. So during lunch, it was still in the same spot where I told you guys, uh, you know, front of the church, the doorway here, your guys' quad car over here that I was sitting in, my little cart over here next to a black tent. That makes it easier for you. Well, that is actually the last thing she said. Kind of want to stop Yeah. So, about over here. And there also was a black truck there earlier that day. Okay. So, so I'm right by that black tent. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm a little behind it because I don't want people, you know, Touching it. Okay. Um, so, Kurt's there prior to you guys leaving for lunch and is in the same spot. And, Corporal, how about the detail about the black truck? Uh, is that something that was pointed out to you on the 21st or is that new? That's new. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, where was the prop truck? Or is it that truck that's there? Uh, the prop truck, whew. the prop truck is, do, do, do. the prop truck's like all the way over here. So down at like the end of the town. Yeah, the down at the end of the town, like way over there. Right when we, as soon as you get in those gates, uh, next to the gallows, it's across from the gallows. I'm like, there's a couple more people. Okay, there. cool. Which might help, might not help, but. Yeah. Of the search. Like, Without the all the, the Google Maps. <laughs> uh, I was like, what the hell? Anyway, um, so way down at the other end. Though. Yeah, it would be. Corporal, do you recall what photograph you're handling? You're handing her. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure who took these photographs, but we were able to locate some aerial um, views online of the rust set, which is what I was showing her there. Thank you. That's why, yeah, that's why we kind of keep a lot of the stuff on us because they don't like to move the prop truck, especially closer to the stuff, so it was pretty far away. Uh, you remember where you took me to the bathroom? Yeah. Past that. So that's the like very 
Yeah, it was right like when you would maybe get pulled up and like the bands are there to take people. Yeah. That's where the prop truck usually stays. So you guys have to like, pull guns from way down there and then ring them all the way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like it's pretty good distance. It's a pretty good distance and then that's why we also didn't want to bring the cart all the way back to the prop truck. So it got left by that tent. Yeah. Um, nothing looked different about it after. No, nope. and we have done this a couple of times on, especially on like big shooting days and everything, just because we are out there like in the boonies with like sticks, snakes, all that crazy stuff. And big rock, so yeah. A few times we just left it there during lunch. Who all uses that cart? Uh, just me, Sarah, Nicole, props. That's it, though. Yeah, that's that's it for the cart. Usually people will try to set their stuff on there, and I quickly shoot them away. Okay. Um, some some people still like to put their stuff on it to rile me. Um, but yeah. So more in a joking manner? I don't know. They just like, they know I don't like them to do it and they still do it anyways and, you know. Okay. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's common to leave it out. Yeah. When you guys break for lunch. Mm -hmm. What about um, at night? At night? We bring the card in at night. And where does it go? It goes in the truck. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this day, there's obviously ammo on it mm -hmm. when it was left out. Yeah. Okay. All right, after lunch, how many guns came back to set? Uh, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure because we were getting into the nitty grits of it, you know, we were about to start shooting indoors, and ultimately uh, we weren't going to be seeing the horses outside, so I didn't bring the two shotguns. I brought one of the shotguns of wooden drums. And so here's the thing about that day. I was bickering with uh, the stunt coordinator all day because he wanted to shoot two pistols before every shot just to make smoke and everything uh, in front of the camera. And I was like, no, that's just, like, extremely uncommon. And he was like, well, we did it on dead for a dollar. And I was like, no, we're not doing that. And But I brought a shotgun uh, in case, like, you know, we could just do one big one if the director really wanted it. But we weren't planning on really doing it. It was just more if Joel, like, pushed for it. So we only brought uh, the rust pistol, the drum pistol, and the wood pistol, and then also a shotgun. Okay. And you guys pulled all four of those out at the same time? Yeah. Um, did anybody have to go back for anything? Uh, I know that I, I think... I brought him there, and then I immediately went to the bathroom after before we started getting into stuff. Okay. So I brought them to the set, and then I immediately had to go pee. Uh, did you already give Dave the gun? No. At so this point, no one had asked for the guns yet, and they were just supposed to be on the cart. Okay. Did in the stock. stay with the cart? I told Sarah and Nicole, too. Okay. Yeah. And were they still there when... Uh, Sarah was flirting with Jensen, and I don't really remember if Nicole was nearby, but Sarah was pretty close to the cart still. Yeah. All right. So, three pistols, one shotgun, nobody went back to the truck for anything. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um... I don't think I went back to the truck, and I don't think Nick Sarah sent Nicole back to the truck. Like I said, I went to the bathroom, and I didn't really. But no it. other guns were pulled out? No. Besides those four? They shouldn't have been pulled out, no. Okay. Um, what time did you come back from lunch? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not entirely sure. Usually our lunch goes from 12.30 to, like, 1.30-ish. Okay. Um, what... Time frame do you think there was between when you guys came back from lunch to pulling the guns back out? Um, coming back from lunch, you know, we get in the vans from base camp, so we probably take five minutes getting from the base camp to the set, and then from that point, uh, we hop right off of the off of the thing and we grab the guns and everything and we go straight over. Okay. Especially because, like, you know, you don't want to be late. All right. So who, I mean, did you grab the cart, take it back to the prop truck, or did you just carry the guns? We just carried from when we came back from lunch. Mm -hmm. 
we just carried the guns to the cart. Okay. Yeah, because we brought them there from the cart, brought them back from the truck to the cart after lunch. Okay. And then who carried what guns? Um, I'm not exactly sure. They were still in the socks, you know. Um, you'd know if you'd carry a shotgun compared to a pistol, though, right? Yeah, totally. Um, maybe Nicole was holding a shotgun and I had a pistol and Sarah had two. Okay. Or maybe Sarah, someone's holding, like, we all kind of just had to hold, like, gun belts, props, you know, not to mention, like, badges and things like that, so. You're just carrying them. We're just all trying to carry all the shit that we have to bring every time. Okay. Um... So, how long would you say, so you guys went straight from the prop truck, took him to the cart? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then, obviously, you have to take all these socks and everything off these guns. Who took them off? Uh, so, like I said, I went to the bathroom at this point. Um, I'm not really sure if Sarah had started doing anything else from that point. All I remember is that I remembered the rust gun was dirty, and so I grabbed the rust gun took it out of the sock, and proceeded to do the whole cleaning thing I told you about. Okay. Um, all Which right. I thought it was pretty weird that, like, they immediately needed the gun in there, like, that quickly after lunch. Usually things take a little while for camera to get set up and everything, you know? Okay. Um, you clean the gun, put that last round in it, and then how long would you say that took? Um, like, five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Where does the gun go after that? Excuse me. <laughs> um, so the gun after that walks in with me and it goes to Dave. Try to show it to Dave. Dave's getting talked at. Um, inside or outside of the church? Inside. He's okay. sitting in the pew, and I think he's supposed to be Russ or someone. And from what I understood, it was just supposed to be a shot where, like, he's sitting there with the gun ready. And then also Dave was just sitting in with it, and then I was going to come back in whenever Alec got there. But Alec got there, and no one called me in. Okay. So, so I wasn't Alec. able to do that last check before Alec got it because I had no idea that the gun had been handed off. And also the video village, due to the camera qu crew quitting that day, wasn't working, so I had no way to see in there. Okay. So you opened the gun for Dave mm -hmm. to do the check, mm -hmm. inside or outside of the church? Inside. Okay. It was it was open already because, you know, I put it in there, and I walked in putting it in, and I just left it open. And rather than closing. what did that check consist of? The check consists of me spinning the cylinder for Dave and telling him uh, that it was dummied up. All right. Did that gun go to anyone else to say, you know, did it go... Because obviously it was in the sock. Did anybody else have a handle on that gun? After lunch? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, not that I could tell. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, was, did Nicole ever handle the gun? Mm. Russ's gun? She really handled it uh, the day before, just like brought it down to me from the cart. Okay. But yeah. not the day of the incident? No. All right. Um, so you give it to Dave, and then where do you go at that point? Uh, I give it to Dave, and I step outside because we're about to start shooting, and I was getting, like, all my stuff ready. Um, and also he was... What do you mean by getting your stuff ready? Uh, getting my fanny pack filled up and, you know, getting my pockets, like, lined with different types of blanks and everything because I have a pocket system where all the halves go on one side, all the quarters go over here, this is my dummy pocket, and yeah, and these are my empty pockets, and sometimes I use my butt pockets if I need to. So, like, uh, Sarah, usually I would just set the per my fanny pack up for her, even though I like to have both on me because Sarah doesn't understand the importance of pockets. But, so I would, would set that up for her, and I would start getting my pockets and everything ready. So it's pretty common for you to put stuff in, like, your pants pocket, right? That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. It's common to put mostly blanks in there, yeah. And then also some trash, you know. Like, 
You can't exactly just throw trash around and you eat stuff, so it's just uh, a lot of pockets. That's why I like those pants. You can, yeah. So you hand the gun to Dave, and then did you see what he did with it at that point? At that point, uh, he was just sitting in with it and not moving it at all. Just holding it. Just holding it. Okay. And his finger wasn't in the trigger guard or anything. Um, obviously, this gun goes in Alex bandolier does cross draw with it. Yeah. Um, Which I was already worried about that because he hadn't really trained with that much. Okay. Yeah. I texted his assistant the night before and wanted to make sure that he was comfortable with that, but they said that he was fine and that, yeah, they were going to figure it out and stuff. So. Do you have that text message still? Yeah. Do you have that? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um. So he was just sitting with it. Obviously, it's not in a holster. No. Um, did you see when he handed it to Alec? No, I was outside. Okay. Yeah, uh, it didn't seem like that much time had gone by. I think I was outside for maybe like 10 more minutes, 10 minutes after I had handed it off to Dave. That the incident happened? Yeah. Or? Before, yeah, and then the incident happened like 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Um... So you take it into the church and give it to Dave. Did was there ever did you ever make an announcement about it being a cold gun or anything of the sort? What did you explain to Dave? Uh, I told Dave I said the gun is dummied up. Okay. From lunch. Alright. Um let's go back to this little guy right here. Where were you standing when it happened? Yep. I was at my cart. You were at the cart when it happened. Yeah. I think our cart, I think we had moved it up ever so slightly okay. from that point. So a little closer. Um, or maybe maybe it was back there and that truck had just moved, actually. I'm not really entirely sure. But, yeah, I was right there, and I was getting my stuff ready. Was this scene eventually supposed to contain, and I'm, I'm going to say live fire and it's not, but, like, blank fire. The scene, what we had been doing all morning was supposed to lead up to the scene that we were, we were supposed to be doing blank fire in, but this particular shot was not. Okay. But eventually it would have gotten to that point pretty much. Yeah. All right. After the incident, um, I know that you had explained that you ran inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the incident occurred... And I, like, kind of didn't really flinch at it, even. And Sarah said, what was that? And I said, I don't know. And Sarah said, was that the gun? And I said, there's no way that could be the gun. And then uh, next thing you know, I hear, like, on the, in the earpiece, like, set medic emergency. And I'm like, oh, what the hell? And I thought it was, like, a popper that had blown someone's arm off or something. Um, but I go over to the front of the church and I look in and I see people on the ground and I'm like oh my god and I said was that the gun and they said yeah it was the gun and to which I go inside scream uh, and then they yell at me and then I walk back out I ask for the gun Dave brings me the gun when you were in there did you see where the gun was no okay all right sorry go ahead no it's fine uh, yeah so I'm you know, everyone's kind of staring and looking at me at this point, uh, and walking in and seeing that was super fucking awful, too, so I kind of come out here, uh, I'm, like, over here at this point, you know, kind of away from everything. Dave brought me the gun. I take all of them out. The first one I take out has been discharged, um, and it, like I told you, at first I thought it could be one of those old dummies. Um, but it could have been a live round, by all means, and once you showed me that, uh, what they pulled out a jewel later, yeah, it kind of seemed more like that. Um, but yeah, so I pull all of them out, and the other five were still dummies, just fine. Okay. Um, so Dave brings it out, hands it to you, is it open or closed at this point? Uh, it's closed. Okay. Um, hands it to you. Where do you inspect it? Uh, you know, it was like still really 
situation to me. So I was either right there or I was right there. When you opened it? When I when I checked the gun. I'm pretty sure I got it here and like we had kind of walked away with it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you said that you emptied the gun, right? Yeah. Where did you empty it? I took it out, put it in my hands, and then I handed them to Sarah and I said, go check that fucking box. I got it from that box. And what to Sarah? The, the dummies and everything. And shell. So everything that you had in my hands went to Sarah. Um, you just handed it to her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, just handed it to her. And uh, I'm sorry, Corporal. Just a point of clarification. What is Ms. Gutierrez saying that she handed to Ms. Zachary? That she handed the ammunition that she took out of the revolver to Sarah. Uh, Is that consistent with what she told you on October 21st? No. I took the gun and I kept it in my waistband after that. Okay. You didn't go check the box? No, I didn't go check the box. I was freaking out and Brian, my boss, came over at that point. And Brian took me a little further away to, you know, kind of relieve people looking at me. And told Sarah, I didn't want you to leave then after she told Sarah to check the box. What happened? I said, check the box. Um, and she comes over to me a little later, you know, while I'm off to the side. And I said, did you check the box? Um, and she said, and we also had collected the other guns, and Sarah took those as well. Uh, and then I was like, did you check the box? And she said, yeah, there were some bad ones in there. And I don't know really what that means. That's just what she said. And I thought that meant like one or two. Okay. Um, two, two days later, Sarah came to my hotel room after Helena Hutchins's one of her vigils. And uh, she came up to my room and was checking on how I was doing. And I asked her, I was all like, I was like, I can't believe somehow there were some bad ones in that box. And she said, she said, Hannah, more than half of that box was bad ones. And she didn't explain what she meant by bad ones? She said more than half of that box, she said more than half of that box were bad. Which, I mean, it's safe to assume that lies. Okay. At that point, yeah, it was safe to assume that those were live. So, in with dummies. when you emptied out the gun, how many rounds were there? There was six. Okay. Yeah, one had been discharged. And do we remember what that one looked like? <sighs> no, not really. Um, I took it out at this point, like, still pretty shocked. I'm, like, shaking just thinking about everything. Um, but so... Um, I take it out, I pull all the others out, I'm like showing them to Dave and I'm saying like, no, like the others are dummies, like what the fuck, how is that in there? And I just like look at Sarah and I like, after I said that, I was like, I don't know how that happened, they are all dummies except for one. And then I like look at Sarah and I was like, go check that box right now. And I handed it to her and so it was pretty quick and I wasn't even like really looking at it. I was just more like looking at Dave and just... Corporal, do you recall on October 21st what Ms. Gutierrez uh, told you in terms of handing the box to Sarah and telling Sarah to check the box? Um, No, she didn't mention anything about telling Sarah to check it. Okay. Uh, So is that different than what she told you on the 21st? Yes. Freaking out at that point. How did you know that one wasn't a dummy? Um, I'm not sure it, that it wasn't a dummy, still. I mean, now we know, really, that it could have been a live round, but in my head, I was thinking that might have been one of the old dummies that the primer cap can pop it out. Okay. Um, because those, I don't know, those still, I haven't heard a lot of reports of those, but I know that those did used to exist. Okay. So after a gun was emptied, I mean, how do you mind if we take a break? Yeah, I'm like we can getting sure. a little flustered. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. Is the restroom okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think
Ms. Morrissey, do you know how much longer I'm wondering if we should take our bath and break? Yeah, and, uh, Your Honor, that's fine. And we, were, we weren't anticipating there being downtime, so we'll see if we need to uh, move the video ahead. Okay. All right. Let's take our bath, uh, bath break. Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. All right.
right, you may be seated. Okay, we are resuming the video at 2.09.08, which is the end of the break of the people on the camera. I don't think we changed anything. I, I, my, my guess is, is that when they stop laughing, it's going to go back to normal audio. Um, can we just try it and see? Or just a little bit. Okay. They're okay. They're, they're outside, but they can handle it. They, they can handle it. Yeah. Oh, mine stay outside. No? Okay. Great. No, I'm not there. I don't. I have a eight-month-old German Shepherd who oh, no, is. Oh no, he's oh, terror. terror right now. Yeah, Absolute really? hell. Yeah. He's yeah. pretty horrid right now. Oh, yeah. Shoot. That's Mine used to. I had a German Shepherd, like a young one, a few years ago, and like she totally like chewed up all my panties and fucking trashed all my plants. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I don't. I don't oh, let him inside like at all. He, yeah. He used crate chains in the beginning because I just wasn't gonna deal with that. Yeah. I normally don't crate chain my dogs, but I've only had huskies, and uh, so this was the first different one that I had, and he's like, he's like the most intelligent thing ever, but yeah. he is like. Detective Joel Clono. Thank you. Exactly. Before or after lunch? Uh, 
I don't really remember. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So then how come he didn't pull from your pockets to load that gun? Mm, well, I, I, like I told you, I pulled those out earlier, and I totally forgot that there were more in there. More in where? More dummies in my pocket. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just had forgotten that they were there. That one last one that you pulled to load the gun, do you remember checking that round? Yeah. And what do you remember about it? Um, it seemed fine with me, and uh, Dave was just kind of in my ear, and so I was shaking it, walking in, and putting it in there. Okay. Um, I just want to follow up on a few things. Um, the uh, Over the break, uh, did you have an opportunity to review some of the evidence photos? Yes. And did those refresh your memory? Yes. Uh, the rounds that were found on the top of the prop cart, um, and, I, and I'm not asking about blanks, um, how many dummy rounds were found on the top of the prop cart, assuming uh, w we've gotten the, the true story that the gun was unloaded at the prop cart? Uh, there were three dummy rounds on the top of the prop cart. And how many live rounds were on the top of the prop cart? Two. And of the three dummy rounds that were on the top of the prop cart, uh, did any of them appear to have depressed primers? Uh, one looked like it had like a semi-depressed primer. Uh, and what about the others? Um, that they did have primers. That did not appear depressed? Correct. And obviously the live rounds did not have depressed primers. Right. <clears throat> um, were you also able to, excuse me, <clears throat> were you also able to uh, refresh your memory as to the dummy rounds that Ms. Gutierrez had in her pocket on October 21st during your interview? Yes. And how many dummy rounds, uh, if you recall, did she uh, pull out of her pocket to show you during the interview? She had six total. And of those six, how many of those had no primer cap at all? Uh, five of them had no primers, and then one of them was one that she demonstrated the, the rattle, so the one with the BBs in it. So. You are now familiar with all the different types of dummy rounds that were on that movie set, correct? Yes. So, if Ms. Gutierrez loaded the gun with dummies and then spun the cylinder for Mr. Halls, would spinning the cylinder enable him to know whether they're dummies or not? The only way that he would be able to tell just by spinning the cylinder would be with the ones that did not have um, the primer caps on them. Other than that, if they had a primer cap, he would not be able to tell if they were dummies. And none of the rounds on the cart were missing primer caps. Correct. But she had five of them in her pocket. Yes that presumably she did not use to load that gun with. Correct. She did state that she did not pull any rounds out of her pocket to load that gun. All right. Thank you for the clarification. No, he was in my ear, like, and oh, you know, the, your radio. Yeah, there's that always is. there's always a fuck ton of people, people in my ear. It's not know, the right. voices. Up here walking. It's not the voices. It's a ton of people, and you'll see me a lot of times on set. Just take that thing out and throw it as far as I can. Okay. Yeah. So, don't so when that's how I knew when the when he was telling me. Yeah, I don't remember exactly when those were in my pockets. And honestly, they might have been in my pockets. Um, in a in a spot where they aren't normally, you know. Okay. Um, all right. So I have some questions regarding like media statements that you guys have put out. Okay. Yeah. Um. And just so you know, like one of them with Bob got a little crazy and Bob. Hold on a second. Can we approach? Thank you. <laughs> Hello.
and we're not sure how trials fluid, okay? Uh, so um, we're going to take a break and um, you'll have to uh, wait in the uh, deliberation room. Don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. And uh, when we think we're ready for you again, we'll um, tell the bailiffs. Okay? Thank you. All right.
All right, you may be seated. Um, we apologize for the delay. We are resuming the video at 2.15.03 for the record. So the first one was about um, training days. You made a statement about how you wanted training days. Yeah. Um, who did you express that to? Gabrielle. Okay. And, yeah, and I asked him about it to Ro and Gabrielle. Right from the get-go, I tried to start getting actors and everything to start working with me. Kind of one a day would have been ideal. Um, they told me, they were like, well, no one really needs to get trained. You know, these are all trained people. And I was like, okay, whatever. I thought that more actors were coming in later, and I would train them as the show went on. But then Joel called me, and Joel was like, no, we need to train, like, all the actors. They're going to be there that first week. And I said, okay. So, yeah, they set up a training day. But I was trying to get them in from, like, the very get-go. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, the statement was that you fought for training days. I did. So, um, yeah, I I was always pretty much arguing with Gabrielle and um, uh, for him. Because at first I didn't even want to have the training day, you know. Um so they're expecting people to do yeah no they literally did not want to have that training day at first and they told me it wasn't necessary and then after joel called me and joel told them like no don't be sorry i'm having some technical okay. it's not us this time <laughs> just let me do okay let me read don't them. panic Oops. see what happens Testing the check.
be back at noon. Okay? Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Better get going.
dad was leaving set to go get shit done, including um, some other stuff like with the knives and the knife hold, holster and all this stuff. So it's just me running the stuff on set with Nicole on a very prop-heavy day. And props includes food and everything, just so you know. So we had a whole table scene that we had to do with just two people which is manageable, but also, like, I was also training the actor with that gun while they're doing it, you know, like, just the girl. She wasn't shooting it or anything, but they decided randomly that they wanted to have her have a gun. So I didn't get paid for armor that day either. I'm working two jobs, and I was supposed to give lessons to Alex that day, but ultimately could not because, one, he didn't show up, two, the producers wouldn't let him, and then, three, I had to stay on set and work with the frickin' food. Okay. But he had agreed to do that day with you, and then it was kind of shut down by others. He said, I will see you tomorrow. And then I also, I think it was a little after that, a couple days after that, where I texted his assistant and I said, hey, you know, does, does he need any more work with this? Like, how is he feeling about that? And he's like, he hasn't expressed anything to me, but I'll let him know that you asked. Okay. Yeah, so I had tried to possibly work with Alec more after that. Okay. So those are, like, the training days I kind of fought for. After his assistant, like, didn't really talk to me back, you know, I'm not exactly going to push for this really big actor to receive that training. Okay. Um, so in reviewing, like, first interview and then media statements and now there's a little bit of inconsistency about when the gun was checked, or okay. the rounds that were checked. Okay. Um, you know, from my understanding, you checked them in the morning and then didn't take them out again after lunch. Didn't take the rounds, the rounds. out of the gun after lunch? Well, you could like they see weren't checked again. You could see that there were no primer caps. Um, I checked the one that I had put in there after that. Okay, but you oh. said only four of them had no primer caps and the other two did. Yeah, and the other two did. Yeah, I pulled that other one out slightly and looked for the hole. I mean, the, the holes were at the bottom, though. You'd have to pull it out a pretty good way. I'm pretty sure it was, like, kind of midway. Stop. Because, yeah, I checked it when I put them in there, and then, yeah. Prior to lunch. Yeah. Prior yeah. to lunch, and then, yeah. Afterwards, opened it up, checked it, Yeah. But by check, you mean just opening Just pulled that one in. out, yeah, and also brushed it and put that other one in. Okay. Um, and I don't know if this is coming from you or if it was from him, um, this whole theory on somebody sabotaging the set. Yeah. Um, Jason kind of agrees with me on that. Uh, I Well, you know, we've all kind of thought about what happened here, and a whole box with what Sarah said to be half live ammunition and half dummy ammunition, that doesn't happen. Like, you know, that's super weird that that would even be on set. So who do you think would do that? Honestly, I'm not sure. Um, I will say right now that, you know, Seth supplies all the boxes. And then on top of that, I was beefing with Seth at the time. Um... I don't really know, I don't want to speculate, but he's also been acting pretty weird towards me personally. And then... So that was that come out to the end, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, well, no, we had a whole ass argument, and we weren't talking during this incident. Like, we were in a full fight. Okay. Yeah. But you have said you haven't seen Seth since before. Yeah, we were texting, and I blew up on him over text messages. Right, but I'm saying you... David, you have not physically seen him. I have not seen Seth, but like I said, Seth sends Sarah to set with things. Okay. And she was there first that morning. Sarah? Yeah. Okay. That's when that box came up for the first time. Yeah. Also, you know, it could have been there but over you the weekend. But you have seen it to do a city on top of... That morning, right? Yeah, I saw it that morning. Okay. On top of all my stuff. When you when she got there, it's understand six forty ish, and Sarah's already been there. That's the first time that box. Um, 
that I saw it, at least. And like I said, I thought it was weird that it wasn't hunched over on any side considering the whole prop truck got moved. Okay. And describe this box again to me, what it looked like. It was the same white box. I think it just said dummies on it. I'm pretty sure. Corporal. I, I just want to, it, it is, in this part of the interview, is Miss Gutierrez insinuating to you that Sarah Zachary planted that box of ammunition? Is that your understanding? Yes. Did you ever find any evidence to support that? No. Just said dummies uh, okay. on the sticker, and it was a sticker and a label, not like handwritten or anything. Um, but it wasn't the same font that I'm used to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, everybody has said, you know, no one ever suspected live rounds to be on the set. Yeah. That's a given. Live rounds aren't allowed. Um, Absolutely not. And especially when it hadn't been brought to set or anything like that to either. Right. So the thing is, there are other live rounds that were found in other various places. Really? Not in that box. Really? Where were they found? Um, I'll go through the pictures because I can't. There's like so many different areas and... Well, I'm going to go over that with you guys, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's news to me. Wow. So, they weren't all in that box. Okay. 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 Oh. Do you have any speculation on that? No. Okay. Um... Do you think anybody else manipulated that gun, Alex gun? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure, and I don't really care to speculate on it either. Well, I mean, there's really not a lot of time between you pulling it out. Well, there was time, you know, in the morning before that even. Um, well, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Um, but in between the time that you had it, you checked around. Yeah. And then... There was like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else did. I wasn't in there. Okay. And that's okay if you don't. Yeah. Um, let's see what's coming. Okay. Uh, remember how I was asking you if they had any safety bulletins or anything that okay. they put out? So these are ones pertaining um, to ammo, ammo, guns. Did you ever see anything like this or was anything like this ever put out? Mm -hmm. you can, um, I definitely didn't see anything like this at all. So they didn't put any protocols out for? I don't believe so. Um, if they did, it might have gotten lost in the email. Um, okay. Not really sure. I'm going to pretty much check through those and see. Okay. Um, but yeah, so safety bulletins, firearms, live ammo. Okay. Okay. That's kind of something that's... Yeah. Um, no. That's fairly um, standard on most productions. Yeah, I didn't see those on my last one either, to be honest with you, or my last one. Um, I think it's also an indie thing, maybe, you know, uh -huh. even though this was, uh, what's in the call it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is the box. This is the box that was on top of the cart. I don't remember that being the box that was on top of the cart. This is the one that was...
Corporal, what photograph are you showing Ms. Gutierrez now? So this um, photo was one that our crime scene technician had kind of put together of um, the box that Hannah had handed to Lieutenant Benavides on the day of the incident, saying that that was the box that she was using. So it's just different angles of that box of pictures that Marissa took. And Marissa, what photograph are you showing her what we currently have? entered in evidence as States Exhibit 63. Can you see that? Yes, that's it. Okay, thank you. I handed that you guys have said that you had pulled from. I thought it just said something on it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember this one being the one. I thought it was much cleaner than that. Cleaner in what way? Uh, like, you know, just how this is kind of messed up right here. Like, these are all kind of dirty, and like the side right here is dirty. I thought it was pretty clean and new, the one that we were using. Okay. Yeah, because this matches the photo that you showed me. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. Um, With you guys know, found this on the cart, or? Yeah, this is the one that was given to us that you guys had said that. This is the box that you pulled from, and this is the one that Sarah checked. This is the one that Sarah checked. Okay, and she found multiple live ones in there. Shows one? Suspected. Until it goes to the lab, we can't, obviously we can't confirm. Okay. Um, yeah, she, she definitely said that there were multiple in there. This is it. Okay. Um... I don't know, I kind of think it's strange that these ones are missing out of here when I'm pretty sure like we had only really touched these first couple of rows there. And then you, I mean... What? This? There's also a hole there. Yeah, no, I think I think that's weird. I don't remember that. Okay. Um, I don't know if maybe one was taken back to the truck or something? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know if Sarah went back to the truck at all with anything. Okay. But you didn't? No, I didn't. I was there with Brian the whole time. Um, Sarah, uh, I don't know exactly. I think she might have went back to the truck. So, these two were on the top of the cart. Okay. Why are you showing her a photo of right now? Uh, the two live rounds, well, suspected at the time, rounds that were on top of the cart. And they were later confirmed to be live? Yes. All the suspected live ones. Okay. Okay. That was the one that came out of the gun? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I don't know if you noticed commonality between these. So we expect them to be live. Um, the silver? Okay. All right. That didn't stick, stick out to you when you loaded that gun? No. But the rest of them were not the same color? No. no. I'm sorry, I thought that was messed up right there. I thought that was a different kind of loading gate. Okay, yeah. Was this one pulled out after lunch? Um, I can't really tell if, uh, is that it? I would have to see the bottom of it to really tell if this is Russ gun or not. Um, other than that, the only other two, if this isn't Russ, they, they should have the two stars on them. Okay, the Marshall one? Yeah, the two Marshall ones okay. that have been out there after lunch. Okay. So, I'm not, is that the rust gun? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't, re I can't really tell unless I see the bottom of it. You said it had like markings on the bottom. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is your guys' prop truck, correct? Yeah. Okay. Back of it. Cool. Okay. Um, so there's two access points to this truck. Yeah. One is here on the side, it's on the passenger side, mm -hmm. and then this back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This is how we found it. Yeah. Um, is that pretty common on how, obviously this is after the incident, so stuff is put away, but is this pretty common on how you guys stored that cart? Yeah, we left it usually right there. Okay. And that's safe? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're telling me, and you know, I've, well, yeah. I don't really know safe too, too much, but you tell me when you lock it, you pull this handle, it locks itself. You yeah. don't have to like hit the pound key or no, you know what I mean? 100%, you just lock it and it locks. Okay. 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 Yeah. And it, every locked. single time it locks like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is where you kept the gun. Mm -hmm. So this is the cart. This is how we found the cart the day of the incident. Okay. So um, I'm not really seeing the box on the top of it. Corporal, can you just explain to us what, what's going on right now? Um, so showing Hannah these um, various photos that um, our crime scene technician Rosa Popel had taken, um, I'm wanting her to identify um, the items that we've looked at just to confirm that that um, you know that that's what she was using, that that's the cart that she was using, that that's the truck that they were storing their items in. Um, with regards to the truck, um, you know, explaining obviously that there's only two access points on that truck. Um, the reason behind me showing her the picture of the inside was because it was pretty disorganized. So I wanted to, her to confirm if that is how they kept that truck. Um, another thing that we had noticed on the truck was that there was a firearm outside of that safe. Um, even though they had claimed that they kept all the guns in the safe. And so that's why I'm having her essentially identify that those are the areas that they used. Thank you. Well, that's the thing is that box was given to us. To us. By who? Sarah, I believe, but okay. And going back to it, are you, if Sarah gave her a box, are you convinced that's the box that you saw? I don't. I don't remember that being the box that you were pulling from. I don't. I don't recall that being the box that we were pulling from. Okay. It seems a little dingy, but yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. But here's my thing: is that you know, yeah, there is a suspected live rounds in this box, which this matches what you showed me. Yeah. What you brought. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, those are the ones I brought. I'm not sure if Steph has any like that. Okay. But also, I mean, a box is a box. Um, you can put different trays in different boxes, you know. These two, I think one of these was the one used. I think this one was a potential suspect of mine. Okay. Um, you know, just, I would say that's, I think, a blank that we have put there. Okay. But this is, I mean, how the top of this looked. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Were these already on it, or were these on actors? Uh, these were on actors. That one was uh, Swim, and this one's Jensen. So did they 
just drop him on the card after the incident? Um, uh, they gave him back to Sarah. Okay, and she put him there. Yeah. The salt was on that card. Also suspected by Okay. Um, these were the ones on the side. Two out of the three of these are suspected life. Um, and this is on the top of the cart. So it's not like from a different area. These are on the top of the cart. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's just yeah. Yeah. Of them. This is Alex Belt. Yeah. explained this to me earlier. Um, I was yeah. curious on what these coursey rounds were. Yeah. Um, what's up? What's what the are the horsey rounds? Oh, the horsey rounds. Okay, yeah. I thought you were saying that there were live in those. Um, no, this box is empty. Yeah, but yeah. Just so those are the, those are like the eight loads I got assigned you about. That's okay. the one box that like, I contributed. Yeah. The horse, is there yeah. Yeah. The okay. horsey rounds. Yeah. It's had a little horseshoe. I thought it was cute. This is another box. Okay. Uh, okay. With one suspected life. Okay. Copy that. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure about this box, the writing on it. I've definitely seen it before, but yeah, I'm not sure what the writing is. Cause that can't be Okay. Um, he said that he marks stuff like that. Okay. Just as a point of clarification, what photo are you showing Ms. Uh, Gutierrez at this point? So I'm showing her, um, again, it's different views of that box and I think inside the box, um, photos that our crime scene tech had taken of the other box of 45 um, long colt dummy rounds. That's how it was labeled on the box. The difference with this label is it was the one with white tape and it was handwriting in blue sharpie, which was identified to come from Seth Kenny. And then in that box, um, we did have one round that did not shake, which we sent to the FBI to be tested, um, as we had suspected that it may have been live as well. And it turns out that that round was, in fact, a dummy. Are you showing Ms. Gutierrez uh, the box that we have a photo of entered into evidence as State's Exhibit 48? Yes, that's it. Is it your understanding that that is the box of dummy rounds that was provided by Seth Kinney? Yes. Is it your understanding that that is the only box of dummy rounds that was provided by Seth Kinney? Yes. Thank you. At least for 45 long cool. I appreciate the distinction. Thank you. Um, these are some other things from Seth that weren't marked by Seth. But yeah, and he, he said he does yeah, different kind of ways. Things, yeah. So, do you do a booster on the phone in one of your bags? Okay. Okay. Um, just different calibers. The only the thing that sticks out is that this... Yeah. You always want to keep these on set. These are... Basically, you put those there in order to, like, if you have a gun scene, you know, and the person is reloading it, they would be, if they shot the gun off and everything, they would be dropping those out of the cylinder. And so I have a couple of bags. Okay, so that's why you keep yeah, you the bring, ones that don't have. Yeah, you bring those so that way, you know, you can litter the ground with shells to make it look like people have been shooting there. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you definitely always need to have like at least a couple of bags of ones that have no thing on them. Yeah. What do you know about the manufacturer of what you guys receive? <sighs> um, I'm not entirely sure. Are you saying like Joe Swanson? Because I I don't know exactly where all these come from. Like I said, a lot of these came from Seth. Um. Do you know, okay, so brands, you yeah. know what a Winchester is. Everybody knows Winchester makes yeah. live rounds. Yeah. Okay, so one of these was a Winchester round. 
a Winchester like live round? Well, it was one of these. I think this like one a forty-five. Was a like it's a not, 4440? It's not live, obviously. Okay. But at one point, it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not saying for this set particularly, but Winchester doesn't make made this up. These, the manufacturer of these is Starling Brass. Okay. Okay. And this is just from doing research mm -hmm. and what I have found out. Corporal, what are you showing her now, just so that we can follow along? Um, so the one picture is just a bunch of casings, but what um, what I'm trying to show her is the different head stamps and um, how you could essentially tell the difference in the manufacturers on the head stamps. And, and what are you comparing, Starling Brass and? Just any of the other ones that we had found. And are you showing photos of dummy rounds with different head stamps? Uh, I believe the dummy rounds and then also that last picture that I was showing her were just the casings themselves. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. So you can tell because it has a like a little star, yeah. oh, sure. an arc, and then a star. Yeah. yeah. So all these have different manufacturers, that's how you can tell where these come from. Okay. Some of them have nothing. Yeah. And some mm -hmm. of them... Like I said, they all kind of vary a little bit. Right. Yeah. So... Oh, the star, arc and star, yeah. Okay, that's the one that was this charged. Yeah. So, here's my thing with this company is, this company doesn't produce live ammo. So, what the fuck? That's insane. Wow. So how did that happen? That must have, is that one of those primer cap things I was talking about? Those older ones that like the primer cap still alive? They I don't know how it. that happened then. So this company, and you said those Starline caps? Starline. Starline. Starline Brass is Starline the company. Starline Brass. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they don't produce live brass. So somebody's got to use So somebody, this is used for movie sets. Yeah. yeah. Because they are totally, but this was from the... Uh, Corporal, I'm going to interrupt real quick. Um, can you kind of describe for us uh, what your impression was on November 9th about Starline Brass um, and reloads versus small manufacturers and, and, and whether or not you learned information after that. Yeah, so at the time of this interview and um, various other interviews I had done along with my own research into um, Starline Brass, I had discovered that they don't make their own live ammunition, that they are an ammunition component company. So they would have sold um, essentially the, the casing, um, that, that brass part. Um, so at the time of this interview, my understanding um, in doing this was that it potentially was just reloaded rounds. And so somebody, you know, bought the components and then made the ammunition themselves. And later on, I had actually discovered that there could potentially be, um, you know, maybe manufacturers elsewhere that use these components to make their own ammunition. Um, interestingly, one day during an interview with, or not an interview, but a meeting with the DA's office, I was looking at my own ammunition and it had the same head stamp for duty. Thank you. On top of the cart, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This was the round that. <coughs> that should have been the one that I took out and gave to Sarah. That should be it. Right. So, like, what are you, like, what are you saying for that? Like, somehow that one that should have never somebody, been able to fire was able to fire. Might have been to a live round or just I me. Mean, I think that's speculation. Oh because, my God! Because those, if they don't make live rounds, somebody had to convert it, or it was a dummy that just went haywire. I guess. Which more likely, somebody converted that to a live round. Take a deep breath. 
deep breath. That that's just like I said, I wanna be honest with you guys about yeah, you know that. Right. Right. about that where we're at and what we've found. Okay. okay. Yeah, those are mine. Okay. Yeah. The ones that you keep for mm -hmm. got it. And this is what I'm saying. So there's a bunch of random you know Dummies that fly out of places and that are left places. Well, what's weird to me is all the different brands. Right. So, yeah, they're all like kind of a little different, like I told you. It's so, so weird. This is like a BHA. This is a S and B. Uh, the rest of these are Starline. Starline. Yeah. So I mostly have, have noticed the Starline ones. Um, yeah, I try to use those because I. Where those came from? The Starline. I have no idea. I mean, like, I've seen them a lot before. I had some on my last set. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's the normal of what is supplied. Okay. So, I, I don't know if you want to go through those again. Did, did they do gun residue out of, did they find powder residue in well, that it, star line one? It takes a while for Okay, yeah. To come do you guys have any idea of how long, like, the labs are going to take? It actually took a while. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, my mind was that they were talking like months? Actually, like, uh, they were using the quickest year? way to do it. At the state level, it will take two years. But the Are FBI you does, fucking kidding no, me? The FBI doesn't do that. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, that's why I brought the FBI. Oh, in. my God. Two years? No, but not for the FBI. Oh, okay. No, I was yeah. like, I can't fucking do this for two years, guys. Oh, my God. That's why I didn't need the light bar. No, totally. Thank God. Um, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Um, yeah, honestly, depending on how many suspected lives are in here, considering with what Sarah told me, I would kind of consider that there's another box. This is it, sir. Well, just because she told me that more than half of the box she shook and was live. Yeah, we so, so like, like, so where does that we? Where does those go? I don't. When you're doing things in a state of, of you know, a, after a traumatic situation, totally. um, what you perceive could not be what is. Okay, so. We have the spent casing from Alex Gunn. Okay. Um, we have the one that was in that box. Yeah. Which we were told that you were pull that this was the box that you were pulling from. Yeah, I might. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have the two on the top of the cart. Yeah. Just the so one that might one. have been from the box. Do you think she was doing them and then throwing them out? No. On the cart. Um, just checking. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I wasn't there. Um, one in the bandolier on the top of the cart. Right. And one in Alex's bandolier. Mm hmm And then the one that's unsure that was in that blue shrubby box. Mm -hmm. And they looks like they're all sterling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're all that that type. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. So my thing is, I mean these boxes obviously I mean you can just even though these are dummy rounds. Yeah. You know, a majority of them, obviously. You yeah. can see that they are different kinds of dummy rounds. Totally. So yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why would there be mixed boxes of this stuff? Um, so usually, like, you know, the only thing that I try to keep consistent is if there's no primer caps or if there's primer caps. And so most of the time, just try to keep the primer caps, the ones without primer caps together, so that way I know where they are. Okay. And then, you know, this box, is, why would there be live ammo on the set? I have no idea. Um, at this point, it's kind of seeming like somehow these were mixed in. Okay. 
Um, did you ever do gun practice on this set? Never. Not once. Never took the guns out for target practice in this way? No, and I think there would be, like, videos, pictures of that or anything. You know, everyone would be pretty stoked if we were going shooting on set. Okay. Even so, on the weekends, there would at least be something. You wouldn't suspect anyone to tell me that you were out there? I don't know why people would say that. Okay. Because 100% I was not, and I guarantee you people would probably have pictures and be stoked about it. Okay. Is there any reason that you can think of that your DNA or prints would come back on these? <sighs> maybe picking them up, um, maybe moving them around, maybe not necessarily putting them in things, maybe not checking them because I'm not putting them in things. Okay. And, you know, I did open the box as well. So, yeah, I opened it. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I what? still don't really remember this being the box, but, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I thought it just said dummies written on it. Did you find any box that just said, like, dummies on it? So many boxes that... I'm just saying, like, you know, if there was a box... I'll look, I mean, sure I'll look, look further into it. And yeah, I'm just saying, if there was a box that, like, just had dummies straight across on it, you can switch boxes around, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I don't really know. Yeah, and for, this was all found on the cart or was in the truck? Or? Yeah, these were on the cart. Yeah. On the public cart. I mean, this is on the public cart. Where did that shotgun go after? Uh, the shotgun? Yeah. That should have been there. Where? That should have been probably on the bottom of the cart. Okay. After yeah. the incident? Yeah, I'm not there. I moved it. What about those two other guns? Those should have been on the cart, um, like I said, given to Sarah. I'm not sure if she put the guns away or something just out of, like, you know, yeah, we'll wanting to keep them locked up. Her. Because, yeah, I definitely didn't put anything away, and I was with Brian the whole time, kind of freaking out. Right on the side. And you didn't see where Sarah went. I mean, that's the only way to run with guns. No, I didn't see. I didn't. Corporal, did Ms. Gutierrez indicate to you that she did see Ms. Zachary um, take some items and return them to the prop truck? Yeah, so earlier in this interview, um, she does make a statement that she saw Sarah collecting the guns. And, and did she indicate that she was taking them back to the truck? Do you recall? I don't recall. Okay, thank you. Here she went and she was gone for like 10, 15 minutes before you guys shut up. Yeah, so that's where we're at. Okay. Every single one of those suspected lives is still in breath. Okay. Um, that's fucking crazy. That's crazy. That's like literally insane. Do you have any questions? No. What to? Yeah, what to? Do you have any questions? <sighs> no, not really. Okay. You can always call me. Yeah, yeah. This is. That's pretty crazy. That's like fucking. I don't even know how he would do that. Okay, well, let's uh, get going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I
um, Corporal, I'm going to show you what has been entered into evidence as States Exhibit 57 and for counsel, just so I don't have to connect and disconnect. We'll do it the easy way. Do you recognize that? Yes. What are those? Uh, those are rounds that we had collected from Rust. Are these rounds or casings? Casings. Okay. And at any point in time, and, and let's be clear, these casings in States Exhibit 57, uh, why are they noteworthy? Um, because they contain the same head stamp and then same color primer as the uh, live rounds on Rust. And when you say that they're casings, they're spent casings, correct? Yes. Uh, so they're not dummies and they're not live rounds, they're just spent casings. Yes. And at any point in time were those spent casings sent to the FBI for fingerprint testing? Yes, they were. Who requested that? You did. And what were the results? Uh, they had no yield on them. Okay. Predictably, right? Correct. Okay. Um, It, I, I want to go back just uh, just briefly to uh, you remember Mr. Benavides's uh, body worn camera footage. Yes, I reviewed it quite a few times. And uh, do you remember um, Mr. Benavides being asked some questions by defense counsel uh, about why the prop truck was not um, enclosed in the crime scene tape? Yes, I remember the questions. And uh, did Mr. Bowles point out a truck on the video? Yes. Um, have you been to this movie set? I have. Uh, and where was the prop truck located? So the prop truck was actually at the, what would have been the northern end of the town. Um, if you recall in my video, I took um, Ms. Gutierrez to the bathrooms, and that prop truck was actually even further from that. So the truck that was outside the crime scene tape in Mr. Benavides's video, uh, based on your investigation, was that the prop truck? No, it wasn't. In Hannah's interview, she actually said that the prop truck was at that other end of the movie town, and she specifically said um, where you walked me to the bathrooms, it's further than that. All right. Um, Ms. Gutierrez indicated to you that she brought two boxes of dummies onto the set, correct? Correct. How many boxes of dummies from Ms. Gutierrez do you have in evidence? We found one. Do you know what happened to the other one? No. And for completeness, did you ever find any evidence that Ms. Gutierrez was engaging in any kind of target practice or plinking, anything like that? No. Um, did you ever find any evidence that Mr. Kenny was the source of the live rounds on set? No. Did you ever discover any evidence that Sarah Zachary was the source of the live rounds on set? No. Did you ever discover any evidence that Hannah Gutierrez was the person who brought the live rounds on set? I guess it would be circumstantial. What circumstantial evidence are you referring to? Um, so in her interview, I mean, there's a lot of things. So, um, you know, that box she uh, identified in her interview and I asked her to show me what a box of hers would look like. Um, she identified one on her phone. That picture on her phone matched exactly that box that we had. Um, you know, she had, she was the one that handed that box to Lieutenant Benavides, stating that that was the box that she was pulling from, um, along with, you know, the 
various bandoliers that we collected with that live ammunition she identified as bringing from her previous set that she worked on. Um, and, you know, the other box of dummies, just it didn't match the the box that she had brought. It was identified as one brought by Seth Kenny. The rounds inside that box um, did not even, just the dummies themselves didn't match in the way they looked. Um, so all, all of this in totality um, is what we used in our investigation. Um, did you ever uh, discover any evidence uh, as to who loaded the live round in the gun? In Hannah's interview, she told me that she was the one that loaded Alex's gun. All right. I'll pass the witness. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Corporal. Good afternoon, Mr. Bowles. So... Uh, in your direct testimony, do I understand that you said you did not do the prop truck warrant until the 27th because, and, and I'm still going, because you did not have information from Ms. Gutierrez Reed about the prop truck? Uh, if that's the statement that I made. Okay, so you stated under oath just a little bit ago that the delay in the prop truck search warrant from the 21st to the 27th was because you didn't have information about the prop truck from Ms. Gutierrez Reed, correct? So I wasn't even the case agent at that time. Okay, that wasn't my question. My question was, you just stated earlier in your testimony that you didn't have information about the prop truck from Ms. Gutierrez Reed, correct? Maybe if that's what I said. Okay, then I want to show you what I'm going to Mark for identification is defendant's O. And may I approach, Your Honor? Corporal, I'm going to show you what um, is marked as defendant's O and ask you if you could review that and see if you identify it. So your highlighted portion? Uh, just the, the document itself. Can okay. You, do you know what that is? Yes. What is that? So this is um, the search warrant that I wrote um, on October 27th to search the prop truck. Your Honor, I'd move admission of defendant's oath. Um, I would have an obvious objection to uh, pages and pages of inadmissible hearsay. Would you like to approach? Or? Yes. So, Corporal, do you recall that you were the affiant for a search warrant for that prop truck? Yes. And, and when I say affiant, I mean that you swore under oath to the judge to get this search warrant that these statements you made were true, correct? Yes. Now, do you recall making a statement to this judge to get a search warrant for the prop truck that, due to the information received from Hannah, Affiant would like approval of a search warrant for the prop truck on scene due to the statement received about firearms and ammunition being stored in the truck. Do you remember making that statement? Yes. Okay. Do you also remember making the statement to the judge uh, that after conducting an interview with Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, she advised on the day of the incident that the crew broke for lunch Firearms were taken back and secured inside a safe on a prop truck. 
recall making that statement? Yes. So this statement under oath, don't you agree with me that it conflicts with your statement you just made under oath in testimony? In what way? You told this jury earlier that you did not have information from Ms. Gutierrez-Reed about the prop truck. That's why there was a delay in doing this search warrant. But in fact, you told the judge you did have information from Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, didn't you? Yes, I did. So you're asking this jury to believe you today. Which of these statements were true? This statement or the one you told them just earlier in court? Uh, I, I guess I did get a statement from her that stuff was stored on the prop truck. Okay, will you agree with me then that the testimony you just gave under oath a little while ago was not true? I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly what I said. Okay. You also stated that the... You also made a statement that Ms. Gutierrez-Reed had unloaded that fire on the Baldwin revolver over the prop cart. You recall that statement? Yes. And in fact, you made that statement numerous times, as I recall. Do you recall making it at least once? Yes, because that's what she had said in her first interview. Can you point out to me, and I'm all ears if you can, because I didn't hear it. Can you point out the timestamp where she said that about loading it over the prop cart? Uh, I don't have the timestamp. Okay. If Do you recall Ms. Gutierrez-Reed's exact words in that first interview about unloading that gun? Verbatim, no. Okay. If I played you a clip, would it refresh your memory? Yes. Okay. Judge, do you want me to turn this Is down? Is anybody going to look at what it's showing her? Well... I'm happy to look at what he's showing. I'm sorry, I'm happy to look at what he's showing, but I also think probably the better and more complete way of handling this is to review the transcript, and I think we have numerous copies of that. So I, I mean, I'm not going to tell Mr. Bowles how to do his job, so show me what you're going to show her. Well, I'm refreshing recollection. Right? I know, but uh, you sure. show Sure, and you show me what you're going to refresh with. This is a clip, and so if you want to play the actual video that was entered, we can do that too. Well, you have it. They, it's, yeah. they, she's your witness now. You do what you want to do. Okay, if you don't want to help us out, is that you, what you're saying? You don't want to play? Mr. Bowles, yeah, you have play. it. You have computers. She's your witness. Okay, then I'll play. Your Honor, Chad's better you at operating. I still don't know what he's going to play. Okay. I, okay. All right. Wait, wait I, I have no wait, idea what he's doing. Yeah, I'm wait, just wait, 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 you're not play. listening to me. Um, what are you showing her? I'm playing her a clip of that video that was entered into evidence. Which one? The, the first, first one? The first one. So the I think first what, clip, I think which this, took 50 minutes? But it's just a short clip. It's like 20 seconds. So he needs to show it to me. Can we just step in the yeah. uh, right and outside? Then, the and then you don't want the jury to me? hear it again because you're refreshing her recall, her memory. Not, it's a, not it's re already, Judge, it's entered into evidence. That's not... Hear. That is... That's not true. You're refreshing her memory. No, but I could play it as if it's in, it's in evidence for, um, already. So then play the exhibit. They've heard it. Yeah, may we approach for a moment just yes. to clarify this?
Okay, Corporal, while we were kind of dealing with that, um, I want to come back to that question on the prop cart loading. And again, I'm because Miss um, Gutierrez Reed did not say that in the interview we just heard. She said she went outside with Dave Halls and unloaded the revolver. She didn't mention anything about a prop cart. You, you agree with me on that? I do not, because I do remember her saying something about doing it over a prop cart. Which uh, interview, the first or second we heard? I believe it was the first, and then the second is where she mentioned that she was in two separate places. Okay, and so we're going to try to find that on the first, and if you can find it when we come back and redirect them, I, I want to hear it. So if you find that timestamp. Now, you also said that you did not meet Seth Kenny until October 27th, until the search of the prop truck, correct? Uh, I believe that was the first time that I had met him in person. Okay, well, you said the word, you, your first interaction with Seth Kenny was October 27th for the search of the prop truck. Do you recall that? No, I said the first time in person. Okay. And in fact, you had had a prior um, telephone call with him, correct? Yes. And that was on the day of the shooting? Uh, I think I actually had a, probably a couple phone calls with him before. On that day on the 21st? Uh, just in between, <clears throat> sorry, in between um, the day of the incident and then to the search of the prop truck. Okay, and we're going to talk about the day of the incident, the call that you all made to Troy Teske. Do you recall that? On the day of the incident? Yes. I don't recall a phone call on the day of the incident to him. Not that afternoon around 4 p.m.? To, to a Troy? Troy Teske? No. Okay. I don't recall. I'm sorry. Okay. And you also said that, that Ms. Gutierrez-Reed saw, said she saw Sarah collecting guns. Recall that? Uh, yes. And again, um, I'd like to see if you could point that out, where that is in the interview, because didn't she say instead that Sarah took stuff from the prop cart and she may have took a gun? She never saw. She said she saw her. Uh, I think the phrase that she used was that she saw Sarah collect the guns. And then later on in that interview, she um, kind of changed her answer. Okay, and the, the jury will be able to hear that too, but I'd like to know where that is on the, if you know. I can't point time stamps out to you, Mr. Bowles. Okay. Now, you are the case agent in this case, correct? I was not at first, but a couple weeks in, yes, I was. And so for two years, you've been the case agent, correct? Yes. Now, if you can tell the jury, that means that you are basically the lead agent on the case, is that right? Yes. And you collect all the information, you do all the investigation, you read all the reports, is that right? Um, a majority of it, yes. Um, and then because this case was rather large, um, we had some, I had assistance from other detectives um, and the district attorney's office. So as part of that, you collect various sources and maybe people are helping you, but you're ultimately uh, the ultimate uh, person with all the information in the case. Is that right? Um, with what's uh, pertinent, I would say so, yes. Okay. But considering how many people were involved um, and how dynamic and everything this case was, um, it is kind of not essentially feasible for me to know every single piece of information. That's why people helped. Sure. And let's start with the first interview and the, the day of the shooting. Now, you recall from your direct and from the videos we saw that you actually walked Miss Gutierrez-Reed to the bathroom? Yes. And you were walking her to the bathroom from when she had been detained in Mr. Benavidez's car, correct? Uh, incorrect, because she was not detained at that point. Okay, well, legality, a legal word, but she was sitting in Mr. Benavidez's car, correct? Yes. Now, while she was sitting in Mr. Benavidez's car, you knew as case agent what had happened that day was Mr. Baldwin had been allowed to walk around and talk to people. I do not know um, anything that had happened with him or where he was prior. Well, do you know, as we sit here today, the case agent, having reviewed the pictures of 
Mr. Baldwin on the cell phone, do you, are you telling the jury you don't know he was out talking to people? Oh, I'd say he was he was out, but at the time that I was there, no. I'm talking about your knowledge today. Do you know today that Mr. Baldwin was not put in a police car like Ms. Gutierrez-Reed? That's correct. Okay. And you know today that Mr. Baldwin, there's a picture of him on his cell phone talking to somebody on the day of the shooting? Yes. Okay. And you know that there is a video of him talking with David Halls and some other people uh, in a, in a, on a truck area. I'm sorry, you said a video with him talking with... To, to David Halls? I, I don't know that video. Okay. In any event, um, she's, she's in Mr. Benavidez's car, and you're walking Ms. Gutierrez-Reed to the bathroom. Yes, sir. And, ma'am, we saw that you went inside the bathroom with Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, correct? That is correct. And one of the reasons you did that was you said that you felt like she might be able, she might harm herself. No, I didn't say that I felt like she was going to. It's just um, typical for us, um, especially because she had requested me to go with her. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, my concern is, or at on that day, my concern is her well-being. Um, she was obviously very distraught at that time. I wanted to make sure that she wasn't going to have some sort of medical episode or something happen in the bathroom where um, I would have to step in at that point. Did she actually ask you to come in the bathroom with her? No. Okay. But she went ahead and went in. Yes, and I turned the opposite direction from her to give her privacy. And would you agree with me that she'd never met you, that that'd be fairly intrusive to go in, inside the actual bathroom with her? Uh, that would be a question for Ms. Gutierrez. Okay. Now, you felt like you were wanting to make sure she didn't hurt herself, including in the bathroom. And so you, you must have felt like she was very distraught. Yes, I do feel like she was distraught that day. And you also heard her say, did you not, that she, um, this was the worst day of her life, she didn't want to live, words to that effect? Uh, I don't recall hearing her saying anything that she didn't want to live. Or she said, my life is over. Sorry, I misremembered that. Did and, you? And I will object. I believe that is absolutely a misstatement of, of what she said on the video. And if Mr. Bowles needs to review the video, I can pull it up. Do you recall what she, what she said? Uh, verbatim, no, but something to that extent. So, okay. So after knowing that, you all take her back to the station, and we see uh, yourself and, and Talamante sitting around a table, correct? Yes. And Miss Gutierrez Reed is then in the corner um, on the opposite end of that table, correct? Yes. Now, do you remember she mentioned at the start that something about maybe she should talk to a lawyer? Yes. And you all told her that, or not you, but do you remember hearing Talamante tell her that it might be a public defender and it might take all night? Uh, yes, yeah, something to that extent. Okay, so with that, um, that statement was made to her with her asking how long a lawyer would take to get, correct? E, I believe so. Okay, and then do you recall hearing that, that you all told her it was just going to be a few basic questions? Uh, I did not make that statement, you know, no, but I believe Hannah's response was that she was willing to answer a few basic questions. Okay, and with that she signed her um, Miranda waiver. Yes. A waiver of her Miranda rights, is that right? Yes. So you felt it was okay for her to do that even in the distraught state that she was in whereby you thought she might even hurt herself? Possibly. Um, I don't believe I said anything about her wanting to hurt herself. Um, just that obviously we take care of the well-being of people. Okay. And then, uh, I'm sorry, what was the other part of the question? No, that's it. You answered it. Um, now, during this first interview, you did not tell Ms. Gutierrez-Reed that, that Helena had passed, did you? No, I didn't even know that uh, Ms. Hutchins had passed away until essentially right before I told Mr. Baldwin. Okay, so you didn't know that time at that time either? I did not know. Okay. Now, during the course of that interview, I think you, you stayed actually at the end of the second interview that when people have undergone a traumatic event, sometimes they can say um, uh, 
unusual thing? I can't remember the exact words you used. Yeah, something about their um, uh, their perception or um, you know recollection after something like that could you know be I guess misinterpreted in a way. Okay, and and you've seen that in the course of your career as an officer that after somebody undergoes a traumatic event, sometimes their memory is affected. Yes, and that's why we conduct additional interviews. Okay. So it's a fact um, you would agree with that she had just witnessed a very traumatic, uh, she had been through a very traumatic situation. Right. She didn't witness it because she, she wasn't it. inside the church. Right. So she was not inside the church. That's what you concluded based on your investigation? And her statements. Okay. And you were able to corroborate that, that right? Yes. Okay. So, um, knowing that, the statement she gave, again, those could have been impacted in some ways by her uh, being a part of a traumatic situation. Theoretically. Now, would you also agree with me that you asked different questions in the second interview than the first interview? Yes, I asked a lot of questions in the second interview. Yeah, it was a lot more comprehensive, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, you also know that when you take an interview of somebody, um, that you can use that in court against them, correct? Their, I'm sorry, the their interview? Yes. Yes. So while you were doing that, while you were questioning her, and you all were talking to her, it looked like kind of being friendly with her, you knew that you could later use that one day in court. Yes. Okay. And um, again, I mean, did she appear during that first interview, right before that first interview, she was in a very distraught state. Um, I would say that when... I'm just going to object to ask an answer. She's already testified to it. That's fine. She has already said it. Okay. Now, in the first interview, Ms. Gutierrez-Reed told you there were three sources of ammunition, correct? In the first interview? Yes. Not correct. Okay. What did she tell you in the first interview? That they came from Seth Kenny. Okay. And then she later tells you... Um, the second interview, it's Seth Kenny, Billy Ray, and herself, right? Um, I don't know if she, I don't remember if she identified Billy Ray, but she did list additional sources. Okay. And she also told you that Seth Kenny had given her ammunition for the prior movie set that she was on, The Old Way? Uh, I don't recall her specifically saying that Seth Kenny provided that. And again, you you don't remember on the, from the first interview a statement that she got ammunition from Seth Kenny? I just said that she did say that she got it from Seth Kenny. Okay. Did you try to corroborate that to pull invoices to show that Seth Kenny had brought ammunition from the uh, to the old way set? Um, not to the old way. Okay. Now, there was talk about the idea of sabotage, and you mentioned um, uh, that this came uh, to your attention as part of this investigation, correct? Correct. Do you recall seeing in that first interview that Officer Talamante brings up the idea to Ms. Gutierrez-Reed that the camera crew walking off, does she think one of them might have done something? She, uh, D Detective Telemonte, did present the idea to Ms. Gutierrez about the camera crew, and Ms. Gutierrez's response was no, that she didn't think it was them, and that she wouldn't want to think that way of anyone. And so that was on October 21st. So the first mention that you're aware of of the possibility of sabotage was your fellow detective, Ms. Telemonte, correct? Uh, that, I would say, is incorrect. Well, where did you hear it before that? Before? The 21st, before Detective Talamante says that. Who, who said it before that? That was a theory that we threw out to try to get answers, not a theory from someone that was on set. Oh, so when you say we threw out a theory, what do you mean? The Sheriff's Office. So the Sheriff's Office created a theory? 
No, again, we were trying to get answers to questions that we had as to w how or why something like this would potentially happen. So was this a ruse? You're trying to trick people? Is that what you're talking about? You created a theory? What, is that what the, what the intent was? No. Okay, well then, did you believe this theory? Believe the theory about the camera crew? The sabotage that you threw out, that the sheriffs made, that the sheriffs put out. Did you believe there was some truth to that? No. Okay, so you put out a false theory. And I'm going to object. She didn't put out a false theory. She didn't say it in the interview. It simply wasn't her. Okay, well then, Talamante put out a false theory. Again, it's it's an interview, so we can discuss things, um, bring up things to, again, try to get questions answered and figure out how to or where to go with our investigation. Okay, and trying to get answers from people through uh, a, a false idea. Um, did you ever actually investigate the camera crew? Did you interview any of them? I did not interview them, no. Did anybody in your team interview any of them? Uh, I believe Detective Joel Cano did. How many of them did he interview? That would be a question for Detective Joel Cano. Okay, and you as the case agent don't know that? No. And, and you don't know what the result of those interviews are? I would have to read his reports. And, and also on that idea, um, you brought up the idea of Starline Brass in the second interview and that these were um, look, appeared to be reloads because Starline Brass doesn't make live ammunition. Do you recall that part of the interview? Yes. Now you heard the uh, prosecutor, uh, special prosecutor's expert, Mr. Haig. He talked about those um, rounds appearing more to be reloads, the live rounds. Did you hear that testimony? Yes, I did. And do you agree with, with him that to you or that those appear to be reloads? Well, and obviously I have to I have to object. It's so far outside the scope of what she could testify to. She's not an expert in ammunition. That's why we called Mr. Hay. And okay, I'm not, I'll ask you another question. Do you have any reason to doubt Mr. Haig that he's correct? Objection That's his. Well, I'll, 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 I'll go ahead. Based on your investigation as a case agent and everything that you reviewed in this case, do you have any information to dispute your own expert, Mr. Haig? No. So if those are reloads, um, and you know what JS means, Joe Swanson, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you had known from talking to Thel Reed that Thel Reed had delivered live ammunition to Seth Kenny on the set of 1883, correct? Uh, from his statement, yes. Yes, and you knew that you had talked to Troy Teske and that he had first um, been holding these and given them to Thel Reed, correct? Correct. Now, did you investigate the idea further, given that these were reloads, to try to figure out the source of the reloads? No, because really what's important to law enforcement were the circumstances of what occurred that day and the facts and the evidence of what occurred during the incident. Okay, well then, Ms. Morrissey asked you earlier if you had any information as to Seth Kenny bringing live rounds on set, but what you just said is you were more focused on the events of the day. Is that correct? That was our main focus, yes. So is it fair to say, would you agree with me, that you didn't fully investigate the circumstances of these reloads? I would say that we investigated it. But you did not fully investigate it because you were more focused on the events of the actual day. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Now you also talked about earlier that um, it was kind of a circumstantial theory about Ms. Gutierrez Reed, but you have no direct evidence that you can tell the jury today that she brought live rounds to set? That's correct. I remember you had told me at one point um, that when you interviewed Sarah Zachary, she gave conflicting information. Do you, is that true? Um, I don't recall my conversation with you. Um, I can say that I did not conduct Sarah's um, initial interview, but I know it was fairly short and I did a more in-depth one with her later. 
Did you find in the course of those interviews, the one you did, her statements to be conflicting? I believe that they were. Okay. In the course of your investigation, did you also um, conclude that Seth Kenny had wanted uh, Ms. Gutierrez Reed fired? Um, I would disagree with him wanting her fired. I believe the conversation that I had seen was that Sarah had the um, ability to fire her because um, essentially the, she wasn't pulling her, her weight. Well, did you ever um, corroborate and try to investigate that uh, with the statements of uh, Troy Teske and Sarah Zachary? Corroborate. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just confused what, about the question if you could. Okay, sure, I'll reword it. Um, did you interview or talk to both Sarah Zachary and Troy Teske? Did they give you information about whether Seth Kenny wanted her fired? Uh, I, I don't recall. Okay. Now, you would agree with me, would you not, that Ms. Gutierrez-Reed was cooperative with you in terms of sitting down for interviews? Yes. And she was also cooperative in um, uh, providing her phone? Yes. Okay. So you didn't have to do a, a search warrant for that? No, I didn't have to on anyone's, essentially, besides Alec Baldwin's. Okay. Yeah. Um, Alec Baldwin had to have a search warrant, had to go through New York, and that, that whole process, is that what happened? That's correct. Okay. Now, as part of your investigation, you concluded uh, not only that Hannah was not in the church at the time, but that she had handed the weapon to Mr. Halls? Yes. And did you also conclude that, that Mr. Halls had handed that to Mr. Baldwin? Yes. And we're, I just want to specify this is before the incident. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I should have given you a time frame. Thank so, you. So, yes, you're right. That's right before, that's right after lunch and right before the shooting is what I'm talking about. Okay. And so in that time frame, um, did you conclude based on all your investigation? So by statements, that is what I concluded. However, there were opposing statements at the beginning of the investigation. Okay, there were conflicting statements at the beginning? Yes. <laughs> Did you determine that those were not correct, those conflicting statements? Um, they were... I guess I'm, I'm going to object because I don't know specifically what statement he's referring oh, to. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll ask you. Okay. Mr. I'll Jane. ask the witness. Yes, Your Honor. Corporal, what statements were conflicting with that idea? Um, so, on the... The day of the incident, I did interview Mr. Baldwin, and in his interview, um, he initially had stated that Hannah handed him the gun. However, later he changed that statement and said that Dave Halls had been the one that handed him the gun. And I, I just would ask the court for some kind of an instruction or guidance with regard to this sounds like hearsay. Um, so if it's not being offered for that, then can we kind of iron that out? Sure, and counsel uh, asked to know those statements, but counsel um, what? asked to know what those statements well, were. Well, that doesn't mean that she opened the door for hearsay. No, and I understand, Your Honor, and I'm just, based on um, her knowledge of these, the effect on her and what she did investigation-wise. Well, so, I'll already ask it that way. Yes. So, and I'm, I'm not trying to get into uh, the core of the statements unless people want to hear it, uh, but I do want to ask you what certain things had an uh, impact on you and your investigation. So that's why I asked that. How did you reconcile, and when you got those conflicting statements, uh, what did you do to make your ultimate conclusion? Did you review additional information, talk to more people, what did you do? Yeah, so that was, I mean, essentially the purpose of re-interviewing and gathering um, people's statements. Okay. Did you also learn and conclude that the Miss Gutierrez Reed, when she handed Halls the, the weapon, had um, shown him the rounds? 
Um, her statement was that she uh, showed him what was in the cylinder, not that she took the rounds out. Okay, and you also heard her say that, that before she put in the last round, that she had shaken it in her statement. Do you remember hearing that? Yes. Okay. Now you, as part of your investigation, you also uh, were aware that numerous people had access to that prop truck? Um, yes. And that was because in the day it was not secured? I wasn't on set, so I can't okay. call that, but, but that you, was my understanding. That's what you, your understanding was. Yes. And um, did you learn in the course of your investigation, your understanding, that it took props a while to get a cart, a prop cart, to use for their weapons? Uh, I believe it took a, a few days for them. Okay. Were you aware whether Ms. Gutierrez-Reed had to pull a wagon before that? No. Okay. You never heard that she had a wagon? Uh, no. Objection okay. asked and answered. Okay. Just okay. You knew as part of your investigation that uh, Ms. Gutierrez-Reed was uh, performing two jobs and had to support props, correct? That's correct. Okay. And she also made statements that she had requested additional training with Gabrielle Pickle. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Did you also, in the course of your investigation, conclude that there was a lot of rushing on the set? Um, from statements provided to me, yes. Did you also learn that whether uh, safety meetings had occurred every day on set? Um, from the interviews that I conducted, it um, seemed pretty apparent that they were not conducted every day. Okay. Was it also apparent to you that the safety bulletins, like for the industry, were not attached to the call sheets? That's correct. Did you ever find any uh, inventory procedure or anything that Rust Productions had put together for the ammunition that was coming in? No. Did you find any inventory procedure in the call sheets or otherwise in production regarding the firearms? No. There was a gun safe on the prop truck, correct? That's correct. And was that uh, that safe, who had access to that, that safe? It would have been Miss um, Gutierrez and Sarah Zachary, and it was a little unclear about Nicole. Okay, and Nicole, again, for the jury, she was the props uh, assistant? Yes. Okay. At, at or before the search of the prop truck that we talked about earlier, did Seth Kenny obtain the code to that safe? Yes. Because okay. he was the one that let you all in on the 27th into the prop truck, correct? That's correct. Okay. In the course of your investigation... Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to back up. Yeah. He did not... Did you say the prop truck or the safe? The safe. I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. It okay. was the safe, I meant. Yeah. He did not let us into the prop truck, um, but he did let us into the safe. Okay. And... Um, Prior to that search on the 27th, between the, the time of the incident on the 21st and then the 27th, there was at least a few days in there where that prop truck was not secure, correct? I wasn't on scene, so I cannot say definitively. Well, do you know as case agent that sheriffs were stationed there the entire time? Uh, they were not stationed there the whole time, but I know they were there at least for a couple days um, before I obtained the search warrant. Okay, so at least from your knowledge as case agent, law enforcement was not present at that prop truck for at least a couple of days. Uh, yes, okay. correct. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the search of the prop truck on the date of 27th and then the search of PDQ props. What date did that occur on, the search of PDQ props? November 30th, okay. 2021. So November 30th, 2021, that was approximately a month and 10 days after the incident. Is that correct? 
Yes. Okay. Uh, sure. And I might be off a day if I'm, I am as close. It's about a month and 10 days, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, during that time frame, um, from reviewing phone records, did you have a call with Seth Kenny on October 25th that lasted about 20 minutes? Uh, I Probably. Do you recall that call, which would have been two days before the search of the prop truck? I, I don't. Between the time of the search of PDQ props and the shooting incident, that month and 10 days, you remember how many calls you had with Seth Kenny? No, there were a bit. There was a lot, wasn't there? He would call you quite a bit? Yes. And uh, isn't it true that he would try to give you information and try to steer you in certain ways? Um, I don't believe he was trying to steer me in any way. I think that he was trying to be um, helpful in locating the source of the live ammunition. Didn't he, didn't he push this on to Ms. Gutierrez-Reed? Push. Didn't he indicate that Ms. Gutierrez-Reed must be the source of the live ammunition? He probably, I mean, he may have said something to that extent. And in fact, um, <clears throat> haven't you seen messages in the course of your investigation where he's imp trying to implicate Ms. Gutierrez-Reed? Uh, are you referring to text messages yes. in between them two? Between uh, them two, between Sarah Zachary, regarding the letters from Oldway, didn't you remember seeing those? Yeah, there were text messages about that. Okay, so you would agree with me, would you not, that Seth Kenny is calling you a lot He's trying to implicate Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, whether that's by providing information what he's doing, but that's what he's doing, isn't he? I can't make that assumption. Ms. Uh, Zachary worked for Seth Kenny, PDQ Props? Uh, yes, I believe she was licensed under them. And you know that right after the shooting, uh, Ms. Zachary and Ms. Mr. Kenny had text and a phone call, correct? Yes. And do you remember that there was words to the effect that there had been a shooting? Uh, I believe the text message said emergency. Emergency. Um, do you know what they discussed? Hang on. We're back to hearsay, and so I want to make a hearsay objection. I can't figure out what the exception would be to this. <coughs> And again, Your Honor, I'll word it in terms of her course of her investigation and the effect. And it's not for the truth. I'm just trying to find out. Well, let's see if it's if it have. Let's see if it meets effect on listener. I haven't okay. heard that yet. I, I guess my concern is is that what's going to happen here is Mr. Bowles is just going to get a bunch of hearsay out. The jury's going to hear it, and then maybe it doesn't have an effect on the listener, and then hearsay is just out and then we've just broken the rules of evidence. So is there a way we can do this so that Mr. Bowles doesn't get to spend the next why half an hour? Why don't you just ask her if any text message between the two of them, um, what if anything it had on the effect of the investigation? Yes, I was going to ask you that. And we are going to have Sarah Zachary as a witness, so uh, we're not going to. Um, but the um, after the phone call and, and text occurred, um, did you learn and did you investigate whether rounds had been thrown away on the set, on the scene? I received a statement of that. Okay, that, that rounds had been thrown away um, on the... the Sorry, counsel for Corporal, did you investigate uh, whether rounds were thrown away? Again, that was a statement in an interview. 
And I'm not asking about the statement. I'm asking if you investigated that at all. I'm not really sure how to, if you want to reword it a different way. Sure. Did you try to locate rounds that, that were thrown away? Over, over a month later? I'm just asking the question if you tried no. to do that. Okay. That statement was given over a month later. And, and likewise, the search of PDQ props was over a month after the shooting incident, correct? Correct. And so there would have been time for Mr. Kenny, had he wanted to, to get rid of evidence if he had wanted to. Is that a fair statement? If he had wanted to. Okay. Did you also investigate whether um, items had been taken from the prop cart to the prop truck? after the shooting because Miss uh, Gutierrez Reed made that statement. Yeah. And Mr. Bowles, what can you just tell her what statement you're referring to? I think this is not hearsay. So I think Ms. Gutierrez's why, statements why, why come in. just ask if she did that without the added part of sure. it's necessary. Yes. I, and I just was trying to ask her if, if you investigated whether items had been taken from the prop car to the prop truck. Um can you give a time period? Yes, right after the shooting, before law enforcement got there. Uh, so during the investigation, um, it was relayed to me that there had been uh, firearms that were secured back in the prop truck. And, did you, and my question was, did you investigate to determine whether that was correct? I'm not really... I mean, I'd say it was given. It was a statement given to okay. me, and we had done a search on the prop trunk. Okay. So, were, were you able to corroborate that? Well, I don't know exactly what guns mm -hmm. were identified to which actor, um, so I can't really say. Okay, so you didn't. You didn't. I would say that we followed up on it. Okay. You also saw on the video where a man at the scene had reached across the crime scene tape. Do you recall that video? Yes. Do you recall um, seeing his hand that it was kind of like this, and he put it down on the, the cart over the tape? Do you recall seeing that? Uh, I recall seeing him grab something off the cart and then putting it back. Do you recall seeing his, <coughs> his hand being behind his back and coming around sort of shaped like this? And then go over the tape onto the cart? No. You don't call scene. Your Honor, this is Mr. Bowles testifying. Mr. Bowles is testifying because he didn't get the right information from that right. All right. Move on. Uh, yeah, I will. Um, you don't know whether he put something on the cart or whether he took something off, do you? And I will object to foundation because this witness wasn't there. That's why I asked her if she didn't know. That's why I said you don't know. All right. So she's already said that she didn't. She doesn't know. So let's move on. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about more about Seth Kenny. You never took his um, fingerprints, correct? Correct. And you never took his DNA, correct? That's correct. And you also never took his uh, phone to be downloaded like the other phones that you took, right? That's correct. So, um, Mr. Kenny, I know you mentioned had shown you certain text messages and other information, but you never got the entirety of what was on his phone, correct? Uh, it wasn't a, a full extraction, if that's what you're referring to. Yes, right. It was not a full extraction. That's correct. And um, in contrast, you got extractions of phones for Ms. Gutierrez Reed, Sarah Zachary, Mr. Halls, and Mr. Baldwin, correct? Yes, because they were on the set. Okay, and, and you had mentioned that before, but actually Seth Kenny was the primary um, source of ammunition to the set. I will object right? to the form of that question. It is completely contrary to the evidence that the jury has heard, and Mr. Bowles knows it. Uh, I, actually, Your Honor, I don't. And I'm asking her a question that's perfectly permissible to ask her. If she Go disagrees. Ahead and ask the question. Okay, I, but my question to you is. Were you aware that Seth Kinney was the primary ammunition supplier to the set? Uh, I wouldn't 
I don't know if I would say primary, but he was a source of ammunition. Okay, he was a source of ammunition to the set. And knowing that, isn't it true that it would be possible for his fingerprints to be on the boxes or ammunition he supplied? It could be possible. And in fact, you, you submitted for um, potential fingerprints those four blank rounds that we saw earlier to the FBI, right? Yes. Um, but you did not send any of the live rounds for fingerprint testing. I think that was discussed with the FBI. Why? And I understand that, but why would it be different in your understanding to send the blanks versus the live rounds? I'm sorry, the blanks? The blanks you sent for fingerprint testing, why were they different and why could you not have sent the live round? Why is there a difference? Do you mean the cartridges? The cartridges. Okay, those I'm are sorry. blanks. I'm not blanks, I'm sorry. The cartridges you sent, um, you're right, already fired cartridges that you sent. Why is that different than the live rounds? That, that test was not requested by us. The test? Which For test? those cartridges? For which cartridges? The f you're talking about the four casings. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So that test came from, Ms. or the request for it came from Ms. Morrissey. Okay, so the, the special prosecutor decided that she was going to try to test the cartridges for the fingerprints. Is that right? Yes. So given that, um, I'm just trying to figure out why the live rounds couldn't have also been tested. I had that discussion with you several times, I believe. Right? We did. We talked about it. And yes. I, still I just still wanted to ask you why those weren't submitted because isn't wouldn't it have been possible? I think you heard testimony from the FBI that it that they wouldn't. There was a I don't think they said they wouldn't. I think they said a very low percentage. Correct. So that again, I had this discussion with the district attorney's office, with our crime scene technician, um, along with our FBI Albuquerque representative, and I believe we took it back to the lab rep representatives as well, as to DNA, um, DNA and latent print testing on the live ammunition that we had found on set. So the reason why we did not proceed, which I had discussed with you, um, as to why we did not do that testing was because there were several statements throughout my interviews and, um, and investigation in general that these live rounds had already been um, touched, handled. This wasn't day one of filming. I believe this was day 12. So um, we had already had statements that these rounds, um, one, may have came from other movie sets, which were the ones in the bandoliers. Um, the ones in the box had been handled by Sarah Zachary, um, along with, you know, the ones that were in the weapon handled by Hannah and Dave, and there's just a lot of handling of those rounds um, that they, to, to us and the discussions that we had had, it didn't make sense for us to do testing on those when we already knew that there were numerous people handling them. Um, it didn't make sense, which I discussed that with you, and I also referred if you had any issues with that going further to discuss it with the district attorney's office. And you had no idea when those rounds appeared on set. You don't have any direct evidence of that. Of when they did? Yes. No. So you, you have no idea if they appeared on day one or day 11? Correct. So given that, the statement you just made about all this handling, you really don't know that, do you? Because you don't know when they came on the set. Again, there's a lot of people handling that stuff on set. Well, if they, from if, if they appeared on the day in question, if that box had just appeared, um, then you have no idea how many people handled those, do you? If, if that box had just appeared. Yes, right. If. Right, you don't know. Right. Okay. And so, um, 
you also heard Ms. Gutierrez Reed state that that they would frequently use uh, dummies and then they would mix them out with other boxes and I asked Popple that. Did, did you hear that testimony? Uh, yes. And so you don't know one way or another because you just saw the boxes as they were in the 21st whether those were the same rounds in the same box on the 18th, for example. That's correct. Okay. And you wouldn't know if they had used them before and then changed them out in a different box, correct? If, who are you referring to? Uh, Ms. Zachary and Ms. Gutierrez-Reed. If they use them in the course of a day, you don't know which box they would have put them in. That's correct. Okay. Um, when you went to Mr. Kenny's business to search, that was pursuant to search warrant again, correct? Yes. And so a, a judge again signed a search warrant on probable cause to search that business, correct? Yes. And you were looking for certain evidence of live rounds, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, did you take a uh, series of photos at that search warrant? Did I? No. Okay, Ms. Popple did? Yes. But you were present to see the various things that were there and that were being photographed? Yes. Um, there was a picture that I want to show you in a moment of a box of, of ammo that had a steel wool in that picture. Do you recall that? I do not. I'm sorry. Okay. I want to show that to you. So I do have an objection. This photo is not in evidence, and I don't know that the photo can come into evidence through this witness. Would you like to approach? Or? I want to see what he's going to do. All right. Yeah. And Kelsey, you had mentioned this was coming in. So this picture is the one that we talked about. No, no. I told you the other picture from Mr. Kenny was coming in during his testimony. That is a photo that you should have gotten in through Ms. Popple, and you can call her back if you want to. Well, if you want to, I'm going to ask her if she recognizes it. If I may approach her. Do you recall, ma'am, if you can look at this photo? Yeah. Let's see if you recognize that box. I, I can say for certain. So you don't remember seeing this particular box and the steel wool and the rounds in here? Do you don't remember this from the search? Your Honor asked and answered. She's already said. Sustained. Okay, we'll, we'll call Officer Popple back. Um, let me ask you this. How many times have you prepped your testimony with Ms. Morrissey? A few. How many times have you met with her? How many days? I couldn't say an exact number. Was it two? Is it three? Again, I couldn't say an exact number. So you don't know how many days you've met to prepare? An exact number? No, no. and I don't want to just assume. Okay. Have you talked to her on the phone about it? Yes. Did you go over the questions she was going to ask you and your answers? Yes. So, in essence, you practiced for today, right? Yes. So, your testimony that you, you've gone over these exhibits, you've gone over what you're going to say today. That's correct. So, when you gave those answers earlier, um, in fact, you, you knew what a particular exhibit number was. It was 48. That was something you all had discussed, wasn't it? Uh, I don't believe the specific exhibit number, um, but again, she showed me when she would ask about it. On a break? Just now when she right. <laughs> would yeah. ask about it. I'm sorry, I, I don't know off the top of my head what exhibit 48 is, and I don't know that the witness does, so um, in order for this to make sense... She, didn't, her, she, did, she didn't ask for clarification. All right. I think we're just going over this. Well, I... If he's okay. mentioning me, I don't know what he's talking okay. about. Well, I, she does, because she was the one that prepped you, right? On. Yes, I will, Your Honor. Did Miss Morrissey prep you, or was it somebody else? Uh, yes, she did. So so she was there talking to you, right? Or, or on the phone or in person? She was the one talking to you. Correct? Yes, it's pretty normal to prep with, a, with the attorney you're working with for a trial. Did you help prep other witnesses in this case with Miss Morrissey? Were you present? No. Okay. As a case agent, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just wondering if you were present during other interviews. Asked and what? answered. She already said no. Move on. Okay. 
Now, um, Mr. Baldwin, I want to talk about him. You and Mr. Baldwin had two phone calls that you recorded. you recall that? Yes. And did you have uh, other phone calls that were not recorded? There, there may have been. Would that be unusual for in your standard operating procedures to have a call with a suspect that you do not record? Um, so it was, again, it was a phone call, so no, we're not really required to um, use lapels to record phone calls. Okay, would that, is that true though when you have a suspect in a shooting case, he's the one accused of shooting, if that person calls you, you're saying you don't have to record that? By policy, no. Um, I've had numerous phone calls where I potentially didn't have a lapel near me. Um, they take time to turn on. Um, so it's, it's possible. There are probably other phone calls in this case that weren't recorded as well. Do you remember the substance of the unrecorded phone calls? Can you point them out? I don't. <laughs> it, we, we don't. I don't know because we don't have them recorded. I'm just wondering if you can remember any of the substance. No. So, in the recorded phone calls, do you recall um, a call of 13 minutes with Mr. Baldwin, approximately, in which he was driving to Vermont? I, I'm sure that there was one. Okay. And do you recall that that he I'll was come over here? Corporal, did you ever 
Um, and I want to, I don't want to know the substance, but did you ever talk to Troy Teske in this case? I believe very briefly. And again, I don't want to know the substance of the call, but what during that call was Seth Kenny present? I believe so. And again, was this right around the time of the shooting? I don't recall the date. Okay. You, again, not getting into the substance, you did talk to Thel Reed in the course of this case, correct? At your request. And you did talk to him, though, right? Yes. Okay. Did you ever talk to Joe Swanson? I don't believe so. On those um, boxes, the JS, I think you confirmed those stand for Joe Swanson? That's what I was told, yes. Okay. started this, I asked you a question about the first interview, and where in that first interview Ms. Gutierrez Reed had said she loaded it over the prop car, that she unloaded that gun over the prop car. Do you recall that? Yeah, I believe I remember her saying something to that extent. Okay, do you recall... Um, if I showed you pages of the transcript, would you, would that refresh your memory as to the exact words that she had said? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, may I, I may approach? Yeah. There are several pages here. Okay. You can read those to yourself, please. <coughs> and it should be highlighted. Um, I would request that the witness read the entire thing, not not just Mr. Bowles' highlight version. They're, they're not, I didn't highlight them. Well, so. So, someone from the defense team highlighted them. Okay, did you get to review them? Did you? I am asking that the witness review all of them. Stay, stay focused. We're going to look at this. Sure. Because you looked at them. I, I, I didn't take note of the, of the page numbers. Courtesy she gave you her transcript, you can give her the page. Her I, page. I, I <coughs> it's page 28 through 32. Is, uh, you're not the one examining. 
please let him answer. I will withdraw no, the no. request. All right. Do you have a chance to read those? Yes. And if you can hand those back. Can I just read her statement? No, uh, it's refreshing your memory. Okay. You wanted the quote, but it's refreshing your memory. Okay. So you can re Ms. remember Ms. from Ms. memory. memory. What are you saying, Mr. Bones? Are you, are you so, speaking to me? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm saying. What would you like, sir? All right, we're trying to get to the truth. That's what I think. All right, you all. <clears throat> you all, ask your question. I'll let you have coffee. Let's let's focus here with our caffeine and ask if she remembers what was said to her. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ma'am, do you remember now the exact words that were said? Yes. And what were those? Her statement was, I took them all out. It was there on the cart, too. Okay, and again... Um, and this is entered into evidence. Do you recall actually that she said? All right. <laughs> Something funny? Yes. You, you want, All right. Is, you know what? We're going to take a break. We're going to spare you a little. All right. Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. All right. I guess here's my problem, Judge. This has been entered into evidence. So I did refresh your memory. Well, the transcript hasn't been entered into evidence. The transcript, but the actual words of this should reflect what was said on the, the tape, unless there's objection by the government.
Так. All right. So, obviously, obviously, uh, States Exhibit 67, which is the interview of Ms. Gutierrez at the police station on October 21, 2024, is relevant to both parties, and that's what they we're not going to consume any more time. It's in evidence. You can certainly view it and uh, come to the conclusion you come to, okay? All right, thank you. And I have a question. Oh, not that one. I'm looking for my stickers. Um, Corporal, I want to take you back to the, um, the four spent casings that we were discussing. Do you remember where those spent casings were found? I do not. Um, do you have any information about where and by whom they were fired? No. Um, Corporal, you were asked by Mr. Bowles if um, <clears throat> if this, the stress of the event on October 21st uh, would affect Ms. Gutierrez's memory. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, and as a as a trained law enforcement officer, do you know can the consumption of drugs also affect a person's memory? Yes. Um, you were asked several questions on cross-examination about your um, contact with some witnesses, and I want to follow up on that. You spoke to Ms. Gutierrez's stepfather, is that correct? Yes, I did. And you spoke to him at Mr. Bowles's request, is that correct? That is correct. And when you spoke to Mr. Reed, he told you that the ammunition... I'm going to object this hearsay too, if that's what we're doing. Well, but it came in through him. Um, he was actually asking about the specifics of the information that she you received. Approach so we can... Okay. Do you recall your conversation with Mr. Reed? Yes. Do you recall the description you were provided from Mr. Reed uh, about the type of bullets that he believed you would find at PDQ? Yeah, he described... No, don't say that. Just say yes. Yes. Okay. When you um, conducted the search of PDQ, did you find live ammunition? Yes, we did. Was the live ammunition consistent with the description provided by Mr. Reed? Yes, it was. 
Are photos of that uh, ammunition entered into evidence in this trial? Yes. Now, you were asked some questions about um, the photograph of, of the box of ammunition that Ms. Gutierrez showed you during the interview. Do you recall that? Yes. Why is the description or appearance of that box important for this investigation? Because the photo that she had shown me matches the box that we found on Rust that she identified as the box she was using. And what did you find inside that box that was noteworthy? Live ammunition. <clears throat> Mr. Bowles asked you some questions about um, whether or not there were safety meetings on set. Do you recall that? Yes. In any of the conversations that Ms. Gutierrez had with you, did she ever indicate that she was concerned or that she complained about lack of safety meetings? No. During the interview that you conducted on November 9th, 2021 with Ms. Gutierrez and Mr. Bowles, did you provide safety bulletins during that interview? Yes, I did. Did it appear to you from your interaction with Ms. Gutierrez that she had ever seen them before in her life? No. Uh, you were asked some questions about whether or not the prop truck was secured by law enforcement, um, I think, in between the 21st and the execution of the warrant on the 27th. Do you remember those? Yes. And were you present in court when Ms. Walters took the stand? Yes, I was. Did you hear Ms. Walters testify under oath that the prop truck was padlocked? Yes. Did you also hear her testify that after the incident, she intentionally changed the padlocks? Yes. Did you hear Ms. Walters testify that the only person who she permitted to get into the prop truck in that time frame was actually the defendant? Yes. Did Mr. Baldwin call you numerous times? Yes. Did Mr. Kenny call you numerous times? Yes. Did Mr. Bowles call you numerous times? Yes. Did Mr. Bowles ask other witnesses or potential witnesses to contact you? Yes. Because of, uh, and let me ask you, in your conversations with Mr. Bowles, did he implicate Mr. Kinney? Um, that seemed to be the direction he was going. And did he put you in touch with Mr. Reed? Yes, he did. And did Mr. Reed implicate Mr. Kinney? Yes, he did. And did he put you in touch with Mr. Teske? I don't believe so. Okay, I don't, I don't remember. That? Okay. And based on the information that you received from Mr. Bowles and Mr. Reed, what did you do? I followed up with the information that they provided me. Did you petition the court for a search warrant? Yes, I did. Did you execute the search warrant? Yes. Did you seize items from PDQ? Yes, I did. Did that investigation lend any any usable evidence that Mr. Kinney provided the live ammunition to the set of rust? No. 
At some point, did you stop pursuing that lead? Yes. Why? Because I had no evidence that supported the information that Mr. Bowles was giving me. Do you have any information that Mr. Kenny was on the set of Rust prior to the death of Ms. Hutchins? None. You were asked whether or not you sent the ammunition boxes uh, that were provided by Mr. Kinney for fingerprints and DNA. Do you recall that? Uh, I believe so. Would you expect Mr. Kenny's fingerprints and DNA to be on ammunition that he provided? Yes. And we understand that I asked you to send the four spent casings for print analysis. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you recall having a conversation with me where I asked you to do that? Uh, yes. Did you tell me that it was highly unlikely that it was going to yield any results? Yes. And were you correct? Yes, I was. Do you know, and if you don't, just say so, uh, when that box of the dummy rounds with the tape and the blue Sharpie writing that came from Seth Kinney, when did that arrive on set, do you know? I don't know the date. In preparation for your testimony, did you meet with me? Yes. Did we meet over Zoom? Yes. Is that the only time that you met with me to prepare for testimony in this case? I believe so. You met with me on another occasion to prepare on another case, is that correct? Yes. Why is it important for you to meet with the prosecuting attorney before you testify? Um, a lot of it is to uh, refresh myself with um, you know, parts of the case and what I need to um, focus on, especially because this is such a big case. Um, as you can see, I have a large binder and a large box. Um, so it helps me to narrow down um, facts that I need to focus on. And have you given truthful testimony today? Yes. When you met with me, did I tell you what to say? Uh, we talked about what was going to be discussed. Did I tell you what testimony to give? Yes. But what did I tell you to give? Did I tell you to tell a lie? No. You're telling the truth? Yes, I am. Did I tell you to tell the truth? Yes. And we know that you had an interview with Ms. Gutierrez on the 21st of October and again on November 9th of 2021. On November 9th, did it appear to you that Ms. Gutierrez had been prepped by her attorney? Yes. I don't have anything further. You're excused. Next witness. The state calls Gabrielle Pickle. Give us just a quick moment to track her down.
Stone. Do you swear firm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I All do. right. Have a seat. Talk into the microphone. Ma'am, go ahead and state your name for the record, please. Gabrielle Pickle. And in October of 2021, how were you employed? Could you rephrase that? In question? October of 2021, how were you employed? I think you're going to need closer. Sorry. Um, as to type of employment or my job title? I'm sorry. Were you employed on the set of Rust? Yes. What was your position? Line producer. What is a line producer? Please let the, the jurors know what that is, what you do. Basically the project manager, um, specifically focusing on the budget and managing the budget. And did you have conversations with Ms. Gutierrez about getting what I'm going to refer to as additional armorer days? Yes. And can you explain to the jury how was her employment set up in terms of armor days and prop assistant days? Let these folks know how you had it arranged. So we had originally, it all depended on the schedule, and we had originally scheduled five days with blank, blanks on set. And so we had five armor days. And then as the schedule changed due to other departments and us filming, this it expanded, meaning that we would need to split up some scenes and whatnot. And so it became seven armor days, I believe. And then she requested different ones for different reasons. And I believe by the end of it, we had 10 armor days, if I remember correctly. And so and let, let me stop you. So when she asked you for additional armor days, you gave them to her? Yes. Did you actually double the number of armor days that she was originally scheduled for? Yes. So I think you just testified that she had 10 armor days total. Is that right? That is to my, the best of my recollection, yes. As of October 21st, 2021, how many days of filming had even happened? Sorry, this is gonna. Yeah, no, take, take your minute. time, and if you need to see a calendar, we can. Provide that would you. actually be very helpful. Sure. It was two weeks and two days, I believe. Is that twenty-one? Of course. All right. <laughs> Two weeks and two days. So a total of 12. We were on our 12th shooting day. So out of 12 days of filming, you gave her 10 armor days, correct? I believe a couple of those were training days, which would have been right prior to shooting. Okay. And did Ms. Gutierrez ask you for additional training days? There was an incident where she requested training that would involve Brady, which was a minor who did not fire weapons in the movie, and I denied that for insurance purposes, um, but that was the only one that we denied. Did Ms. Gutierrez ask you specifically, well, let me, let me rephrase. Did Ms. Gutierrez tell you that she needed additional training time with Alec Baldwin? not phrased like that. Alec was in the question around Brady. Alec was going to be present because they film or their characters in the script were so often together, but it was specifically for Brady to learn um, and yeah, to learn. Not the request was not because Alec needed more time. It was because Brady wanted to do some gun training. Yes. 
And you said no because of insurance reasons? Yes. And what went into that decision? What were the insurance concerns that you had? I would have had, I, the insurance, we would have had to inform insurance and then we would have had to pay a little bit more money just and because the minor element. Because he's a child, yes. right? Okay. At any point in time, did you express concerns to Ms. Gutierrez uh, that she was leaving firearms unattended? I did in an email do and you, then in person. Do you recall the date? I do not. Would seeing a copy of it refresh your memory? Yes, it would. May I approach? I will, yes. I'm sorry. No, it's do you need glasses? No, October 14th. Okay. I'm sorry. October 14th is the date. Did that refresh your memory? It did. Thank you. And did you suggest to Ms. Gutierrez a way of remedying the problem of leaving firearms unattended? Yes. What did you suggest? Some type of logging system, check-in, check-out. And did she respond to you? She did respond via email. And did she agree to a check-in, check-out log system? No. She, why, why not, if she, she told you? She said that it was too complicated to do in between scenes. And they had a system that they were working with, and I'm trying to recollect, that was end of day, I believe. Okay. Did you then have an in-person meeting with Ms. Gutierrez? Yes. And who was present at that meeting? Myself, Brian Norvell, who was the production designer, Hannah, and I believe Roe was there for part of it, the UPM, and then she stepped away to handle something else. And why would Mr. Norvell be there? Because as production designer, he's over everything that is the look of the film, and that includes armor. And did Ms. Gutierrez express concerns about being torn between armor duties and prop assistant duties? Can you rephrase? Did At any point in time, did Ms. Gutierrez indicate to you that she was not that she did not have enough time to focus on her armor duties because she was busy doing props <clears throat> no the reverse would be true so she she focused more on her armor duties and less on her props duties and did that create an issue for you let, let me ask you, did, did you ask uh, Ms. Gutierrez to spend less time on armor duties and more time supporting props? On props days, yes. And when you say props days, what do you mean? Meaning where she was not acting as armor. They were not the armor days that we just referenced. And in the meeting that you had with Ms. Gutierrez, uh, did you offer her additional support so that she could accomplish um, her tasks for both jobs? Yes. 
What additional support did you offer? It was a collaboration of offers between production and um, the art department. So my question is, what support was being offered to her? Admin support, organizational, all the paperwork um, to try to take as much off of that her plate as possible so that she could really focus on the set duties. After the meeting where you offered support, did Ms. Gutierrez again tell you that she was spread too thin? No, we seem to have a plan to move forward. Uh, did Ms. Gutierrez ever express concerns to you that Mr. Baldwin wasn't paying attention during his firearm training that she conducted with him? Not that I recall. In terms of the I apologize, I lost my train of thought. I'm over 50 and it's getting late in the day. Um, is, there a, is there a difference in pay for armor and prop assistant? Yes. Which pays more? Armor. And did Ms. Gutierrez also express perhaps not concerns, but desires to you uh, that her armorer days be um, something that would be recognized by the union. So she and I had had a conversation early on in her hire about us, the production once we had wrapped, and I can't remember the exact procedure, but um, basically writing down her days to submit them to the union to count toward her qualification. I don't remember it being armor specific. I thought it was all days, but that is my memory. Okay. Um, and do you know what union she was attempting to become a part of? It was the California local union. I cannot remember the number off the top of my head, the number of their specific local. Are you a member of that union? I am not. Do you know whether or not you have to be a resident of California to be a member of that union? I do not. All right. Um, I'm going to show you what I have marked as States Exhibit 148. Let me confer. May I approach? Yes. Yeah. Do you recognize that document? Yeah, it's a union start. Sorry. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Is this document signed by Ms. Gutierrez? Yes. Is this document also signed by you? Yes. Is one of the purposes of this document uh, to seek reimbursement for her armorer expenses? Yes. I move for the admission of States Exhibit 148. Yeah, I think the document is still hearsay. Wait, let me, what document is it? And council right. approach.
I'm so Let me shift gears real quick, and then we'll go back. Okay. Um, on the days that, that there was not blank gunfire on the set of rust, were there prop guns being used by actors that were, in fact, real guns? I don't feel... I don't know. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, rather than introduce the exhibit, um, have you reviewed this exhibit? Yes. And was it submitted to you by Ms. Gutierrez? It was submitted to my team, who then submitted to me by Ms. Gutierrez. Okay. Uh, and you signed it? Yes, I did. And what was the first item that Ms. Gutierrez was requesting um, reimbursement for, do you recall? Something called an inertia puller. Thank you. Let me just review my notes real quick. I'll pass the witness. Cross exam. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Picker, good afternoon. I wanted to ask you first on the hiring process for Ms. Gutierrez Reed, mm -hmm. was this a collaborative process with the producers? It was. Okay. Did you have input into that process, into hiring her? Yes. Okay. Ultimately, were you the one that made the decision to hire her? No. I made the offer. Okay. Who made the actual decision? I mean, I would say it was a collaborative decision from okay. the top down. Everybody had to sign off. And so part of that offer process was, was that she would be hired as a key props assistant and an armor, correct? Yes. And ma'am, you've testified today that you had allocated 10 armor days to her? I believe so. Okay. And as part of that film, how many total days of filming do you recall there, were there going to be to complete the film? We had not decided at this point. It was, I believe, 22 or 23, if I remember correctly. Okay, and I'm not holding you to a specific date, but it was 22 or 23 in your memory? Yes. Okay, so out of that 22 or 23, approximately less than half Ms. Gutierrez-Reed was going to be in an armor position? Correct. Okay. Now, by the time of the uh, shooting incident on October 21st, mm -hmm. um, I think you had said there had been approximately... 12 days? 12 filming days. 12 yes. filming days, okay. Do you know how many um, training days uh, had happened by that point? I don't recall. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, that's okay. Do you recall a training where Ms. Gutierrez Reed conducted for actors and some of the producers? That yes. Involved? Okay. And do you recall how many people were at that training? Total? Yes. I do not. Yeah. I know there were we had producers. I was there for the first training and then I had to leave for something else. Um, there were multiple actors that were trained that day. 
I would say a handful of crew that were there as well as actors. Okay, and so just in terms of numbers, can you tell the jury just an idea? If you have a ballpark, how many people? I would say between seven and 12. Okay. At any given time. And uh, was Mystery Terrace Reed in your memory training them all together or were they grouped or how did that training work? She started off with some general training and then worked with them kind of individually to figure out, because they had to figure out the right um, weapons for their characters and things, and so she worked them through that, and also their level of comfort with different types of blanks, and so that was more individual, but there were multiple people there at a time. Do you know approximately how long that training was? No, I was only there for probably an hour. Okay. Did you see Mr. Baldwin there being trained? He was not at that training, no. He was not in the state at that point. Okay. And ma'am, do you know if, if he at one point was able to attend some type of training with Mr. Gutierrez Reed? He did. Did you witness that training? I did not. Okay. So you don't have any personal knowledge of observing it, but you do know that it happened? I know that it was on the schedule. Um, okay. That is the extent of my personal knowledge. We coordinated with multiple departments to make sure that could happen. Okay. Do you know whether Miss um, Gutierrez Reed had requested to do cross draw training with um, with Mr. Baldwin? I don't re recall that at all. Okay. Do you know whether Mr. Baldwin ever uh, had cross draw training on set? I have no idea. Okay. Um, with regard to the duties that she was performing, I think she said she was focusing more on her armor duties. Hmm. Is that right? Yes. And do you recall telling her that she was hired in both positions and that she needed to also, she needed to be focusing more on her props duties? On props days, yes. Okay. And those props days were delineated in the, in the schedule, correct? Yes. No, on those props or by the schedule. I'm sorry? I just wanted to reword that. They were delineated by the schedule. They did not necessarily appear on the schedule. Okay. Would some of those days include um, use of weapons on those props days? The difference was blank firing. So if there were blank blanks present, then that was an armor day. Okay, but if there were not blanks present, but there's firearms present, would you agree with me that that's still an armor function? I mean, it was a Western, so everything that the actors touched is considered a prop, and that was where we had the line between like props and armor. Okay, well, so did you consider the firearms to be the props? Some of them were. Okay. Which ones were props versus not props? I cannot speak to that. Okay. It's not my area of expertise. Okay, but at least your understanding was at least some of the firearms were props. Yes. Now, was that clearly delineated to Ms. Gutierrez Reed as to which firearms were props and which ones were under armor? That information more came from her because she was the expert. Um, in weaponry, not okay. myself. Okay, was that written down somewhere, which firearms would be which? I don't believe so, okay. not to my knowledge. Okay, and then um, with regard to non-blank days, were those all prop days? Yes. Okay, so if there weren't blanks being fired, even if there are firearms being used, those are props days? Correct. Okay. Now, um, didn't you attend and witness some of the trainings that Ms. Gutierrez-Reed had done? You said you spent an hour at the one. Mm -hmm. And were you impressed at how she handled the training? I was. Okay. I learned a lot. Did you have any um, issues or anybody come to you and complain about it? About the training? Yes. No. Okay.
The date of, of the incident, um, are you familiar with Video Village? Yes. Do you, were you aware that the day of this happened, the Video Village went down? Can you further expand on that? Yes, that Video Village uh, was not operating the day of the, that the shooting occurred. Is this due to the camera delay? Is that what you're referencing? Well, I'm just, um, actually, I was going to ask you first if you knew about that video village going down. No. Okay. But you said there was a camera delay. Mm -hmm. Was that because, were you aware the camera crew had walked off the day before? Yes. Okay. And were you um, aware they had come back that, that next day? Yes. Did you um, have any interaction with any of them? Yes. Did you end up calling the police? On them? Yes, no. for any reason. Okay, so was it a pleasant interaction? Not particularly. Okay. But I was just there to make sure they took their stuff and then the production rentals stayed where they were. Okay. Um, how long were they on set that next day? I do not remember as short a time as we could manage for okay. them to pack up their gear. Okay, you were trying to get them off as quick as you could. Well, we needed to start our day, so yeah. we were trying to, you know, move that first and then get rolling. Did that delay the start of that day? It did. Do you know approximately how long that was delayed? Hours. So, at the time you all st were able to start the day and start the various things you're going to do, you're already hours behind. Yes. Okay. So was there a general perception of trying to move quick that day or? No. We, were, we had to replace the camera team and it, we all know that that takes time to get new people into the rhythm. Um, we had been meeting with different different people in charge to figure out what we were moving to other days um, and how we were going to absorb basically what could have been a half day loss at that point. So there wasn't rushing. All the other departments had all of those hours to do whatever they saw fit. The only people that were really intensely focused was the new camera team trying to learn the equipment and get up to speed. Do you know whether on that day um, Ms. Gutierrez-Reed had already used her armor days? I know that day was an armor day. But do you know if she had already used her armor days that had been allocated? No, that one was also approved. Okay, because you were on day 12 and I'm just wondering because you said you gave her 10. They weren't necessarily consecutive. Okay, okay. But you don't know how many she had used up to that day? I, I do not, okay. no. At one point, didn't you tell uh, Ms. Gutierrez-Reed that she wasn't going to be allocated any more training days? But I think you actually worded it training days. I did. I misspelled <laughs> in the text message, yes. Yes, and it was a text with her, and this was a... You remember approximately what day that was? I do not. And why did you tell her there would be no more trading training days is what you were trying to say? Um, at that point, we didn't need them. And she and I had communicated since the very beginning that we wanted to keep track of all of her armor days. And so we texted back and forth fairly often. I mean, every few days. And do you recall what the context was, why she was asking for more training days? So the specific instance that I remember was her asking for a training day with Alec and our minor lead, Brady. And that was the one that I said no to, due to it being a minor. And I just uh, want to ask you if you, um, if I showed you a text, would it refresh you as to the date 
that this occurred? Uh, that this exchange occurred? Yes. Okay. May I approach? I think I have it for Okay, if you can read this now. And Sorry, I'm, there are two dates on this page. I can read. Um, October 15th, 2021. And do you recall getting that text or, or having this text exchange with Ms. Gutierrez Reed? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. keep asking do I? No, he needs to retrieve that from me. Are you going to retrieve that from her? Yes. Once, once she, are you finished reading that? Yes. Okay. Do you recall having that text exchange? Yes. Ms. Gutierrez Reed? Okay. And that was um, in regard to the training of Alec Baldwin. Mm -hmm. And do you remember Ms. Gutierrez Reed saying she's on day six, and this would be day seven of eight of her training days, her armory days? Do you recall that? Mm -hmm. Does that change your um, opinion as to how many armory days she had, that she had eight as opposed to ten? I bel no, I believe um, her armor days, and we can check the pay stubs, but I believe she had the 10 armor days. It may have been that eight were shooting, filming days, and two were training days. I do not recall the exact split, but I do, do recall it being 10 days. If you are able to, can you pull those pay stubs? Uh, to I don't have today. access to them anymore. Okay. Like I'm okay. That would be. So we we've also have you under subpoena. You're aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we may recall you in our case. And ma'am, if you and if your memory is correct, it's correct. But if your memory is ten, ten days, that is my memory. Okay, and I'm just trying to figure out what you what you remember. Um, with regard to the accidental discharges that occurred on set, mm -hmm. did you become aware of those? I was made aware of one. Um, it was reported to the UPM, Ro Walters, and she informed me that it had happened, and I asked her to investigate, and she did, and reported back that she and Hannah had had a conversation, and she felt very good with where the precautions that were in place. Okay, so you said you were aware of one. Do you know which one uh, this involved? It was one reported by Lane Looper via text message to Ro. I don't know if that's an evidence. Who is Lane Looper? He was one of the camera crew. Okay. So, as I understand, Mr. Looper was raising a safety issue uh, through a text, and that went to Roe Walters? Yes. And then that was investigated. Then what, what occurred as a result of that, if anything? It was investigated. I'm not sure. Okay. I do not recall. Now, are you now aware there were two accidental discharges? I found that out afterwards, yes. When did you learn that? Maybe three or four days after the incident. Do you know whether there was any investigation after you learned of that second one? Investi could you clarify? Yes. Do you know whether there was any investigation done after you learned of the second accidental discharge? Did anybody look into it, to your knowledge? I do not know. Okay. Did you do anything personally once you learned about the accident, the second one? Did you do anything to investigate that? 
everything was shut down at that point. Like I found out through other attorneys okay. asking me questions. This was not a set discovery or okay. onset discovery. And I was wondering because the the these charges were the sixteenth, and I think you said three or four days later. Sorry, the discharge that I was made aware of via row was the one, the only one that I knew about during filming. The others I found out about day three or four days after the twenty first. I see. Okay. Once everything had shut down and everybody was trying to figure out what was going on, okay. that's when that came to my attention. Okay. Now, with an accidental discharge like this, um, you have things called a production report, correct? Correct. And that is a, a basically a daily uh, log of what happened that day that might be important? Mm -hmm. um, and ma'am, would you expect that something like an accidental discharge would be uh, put on a production report? I would like it to be. Um, with, re with regard to these, do you know if they made it onto a production report? I do not recall. Okay. I would need to see the production reports. Okay. But in any event, with regard to the second one, it doesn't sound like it made it on the report. I was not aware of it, and I did read every production report. Whose responsibility in the chain of command would it be to report those accidental discharges? Anyone on set? Would the first assistant director have responsibility? In terms of the production report. So the, the AD team is responsible for the production report. Okay. Yes. If they were not made aware, I, I don't know how to answer that question. Oh, okay. So they have to become aware of it. Yes, but somebody it, would need to let them know in order. Okay. And if they do become aware of it, do they have a duty then to? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Are you aware whether daily safety meetings were being conducted on set? Safety meetings were being conducted. They were not every day. They were typically on the days where there was any type of um, bigger element, special effects, stunts, blank days, etc. Okay. And do you know, with regard to safety bulletins, whether those were being attached to the call sheets on a daily basis? Some were, and some were not, okay. which I found out after days after the incident. You also, during this time, um, had a COVID. This was October 2021. Mm -hmm. So did you have a COVID protocol? We did. And in general, um, was that pretty much what we all knew at the time, to limit contact, to wear a mask? I mean, what, what did that entail? You're testing my memory. We tested. Um, I cannot remember how often, frequently. Everybody wore masks. We had hand sanitizer everywhere. Everything was wiped down. I think that was about it. Okay. Did you know whether Ms. Gutierrez Reed was vaccinated or not? We did not ask for vaccination information from cast and crew. Okay. And I guess in general, I take it that in general, you wouldn't want a lot of people in a, a small space if you could help it. Like if there's filming going on in a small building, that's kind of what the COVID protocol was at the time? Yes. Yeah. It was not often practical because filming takes place in small buildings. Sure. But, but to yes. the extent possible, that was the goal? Yes, that was the goal. Okay. Mayor, may I have just a moment?
<coughs> Ms. Pickle, mm -hmm. do you recall the entire text communication that you had with Ms. Gutierrez regarding the training days? I would need to review. Would showing you yes. the entire text thread refresh your memory? Yes. I'm going to ask you to review pages 12,201 through 12,205. Okay. you know how to scroll through a Mac? Yes. Um, I'm going to hand that to you. I want you to take your time. You're going to review four or five pages. Okay. Did that refresh your memory? Yes. Okay, I'm going to take that back as we go through these questions. If you need to see it again to refresh your memory, just let me know. Okay. May I? Yeah. Was your memory refreshed as to the date of the text exchange regarding the training days of Alec Baldwin and Brady? You want me to approach again? Yes, I did not look at every single date. I'm sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> to scroll through. Do I need to look at every date and have? I, I don't. Okay. No, not necessarily. These were on the 17th of October, 2021. So on October 17th of 2021, did you tell Ms. Gutierrez that there would be no more training days? Yes. And do you recall the language of her response? Did Ms. Gutierrez respond to you and say, right on? Yes. I know she's reading from the document not admitted in evidence. Can, can I refresh your memory? Yes. yes. No, just don't, just don't read. Okay. All 
Do you want me to ask the question again without reading it? Yeah. Okay. Um, did Ms. Gutierrez respond to you and say right on? Yes, she did. That's not right on. Oh, I thought that's... No, no, just did she respond to you? Did yeah. she respond to you? She well, did. Well, now, now we've already done it, so just okay. move on. Uh, I want to move to strike that. This Fine, I'll, strike, I'll strike the uh, answer. Okay. Question and answer. Ma'am, do you recall what Ms. Gutierrez's response was to you when you said no more training days? Right on. Thank you. That's fine. Did reviewing these messages refresh your memory as to whether or not you told Ms. Gutierrez that she would have 10 total armor days? Yes, it is confirmed in that text chain that we both knew that there were 10 armor days. Not eight. Not eight, 10. Now, we understand that you, uh, Russ Productions hired Ms. Gutierrez uh, to be armorer and also prop assistant, correct? Correct. And did Ms. Gutierrez agree to take on both roles? Yes. Even though production stopped on October 21st, had this incident not occurred, production was going to continue, correct? Yes for a couple more weeks, is that right? Yes. And was it within the discretion of Rust Productions to continue to increase armor days if necessary throughout the course of the uh, filming? Yes. So just because she was given 10 by October 21st, that doesn't mean that she was going to be limited to 10 for the duration of the filming. Correct. Um, you indicated that you were the line producer on this set? Yes. Uh, prior to October 21st of 2021, how many times had you been a line producer for a film? I feel like I should have that memorized. And I, you don't have to be exact. I've been a line producer for more than a decade. Uh, during that decade? Four to five films a year. Okay. So 40 to 50? Yeah. In those 40 to 50 films, can you estimate for us how many of those films had an armorer? Five or six, to my recollection. Okay. Um, are you yourself familiar with firearms and firearm training? No. So for the hour that you observed Ms. Gutierrez's firearm training, um, did you have any experience from which to compare it? I have sat in on a couple of other trainings. Okay. Um, did those trainings include the use of uh, single action revolvers? I don't know enough to answer that question. Okay, fair enough. And you indicated on, on October 21st that there was a delay in filming because of replacing the camera crew, correct? Correct. And that filming was delayed for hours, right? Yes. And during those hours where filming was not occurring, was Ms. Gutierrez free to go inspect her dummy rounds and do any other work she needed to do? Yes. In terms of the accidental discharges, did Ms. Gutierrez bring them to your attention? No. Do you know whether Ms. Gutierrez brought the accidental discharges to the attention of anyone in production? I do not have knowledge of that. Could Ms. Gutierrez have reported the accidental discharges to production? 
without me hearing about it? No, just could she report it to anyone in production? Yes. Anyone on set could, right? Mm hmm And Mr. Looper did, yes. correct? Mm hmm Did, you were asked some questions about the COVID protocol on set. Did the COVID protocol uh, require Ms. Gutierrez to leave the firearm in the church on October 21st and, and leave the church? Your Honor, I don't object to speculation, lack of knowledge. If, if, if I have you know. no knowledge, I, I can't answer that. I don't know. Well, did you have knowledge of the COVID protocol for the set? I had knowledge of the one page document that we had of the basics. As far as what happened on set, that was really not my job. Okay. Uh, the one page document that you're talking about, uh, did it indicate that the armor needed to be separated from the firearms? It had no such specifics. I don't have anything further. Thank you. Thank you. This witness is excused. Thank you. Counsel? Okay, so the next witness is going to take um, longer than the, you know, the next 35 minutes, so to speak. So I think it's better that you all head out and we'll uh, uh, approach this fresh in the morning. So um, please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. Please don't research, look on Google about the rust matter or this case, and we will um, avoid uh, the, un the delays that have somewhat occurred from time to time. We'll try to get it a better clip here, okay? Thank you. All rise.